rivals since 1893. Penn State has won 40, Pitt 38, and there have been three ties. That's closer than an election in Cook County, Illinois. There have been memorable games and memorable players. In 1950, in mud as black as a panther, Pitt trailed late in the fourth period, 21-14. Pitt quarterback Bob Beswick passed to Nick LaRosa for a TD. After kicking the extra point, Pitt was penalized for having too many men on the field, and the next attempt missed, and Penn State won it 21-20. In 1976, Tony Dorsett led Pitt to victory and to the national championship. There was revenge in the Panther Eye this year, but the Nittany Lion was resolute. This black ledge to Kenny Jackson pass was State's only TD yesterday, but they hung on in a close game to win it 19 to 10 to keep Joe Paterno's dream for a national championship alive. Well, depending on what Georgia does today, it certainly sets up a marvelous Sugar Bowl, Bino, doesn't it? Definitely. In 1979 Sugar Bowl, Penn State had two tries from the one-yard line to score a touchdown against Alabama. Joe Paterno said to Jim Tarbin, the athletic director and his boss, this time I'm going to score a touchdown. Okay. <laughs> Jim, I understand you have something for us at halftime. That's right, Jack. At halftime, I'll have an in-depth report on the status of black coaches in major college football for the most part. It's a story of frustration. Jack. All right, Jim, this is our last week in the studio. Next week, college football today. We'll go on location to Austin, Texas for the Texas-Arkansas game. And today, we would like to thank all our studio personnel for the great help they have been throughout this series. This year, give someone a personal computer from Computerland worth $2,000 or more, and you can also give them a free starter kit. Two hours of free instruction and a $100 gift certificate. Give someone you love a whole sleeve full of presents from Computerland. I like it. time for that new family car, GMAC can help you get it. With financing to fit your budget. It's available right here at your GM dealer. Now at participating GM dealers, get low 10.9 financing on new 82 models. We got it! The Energizer. I haven't used this flashlight since the last time we blew a fuse. That's about two years ago. Hey, still energized. Comparing all leading battery brands after two years, nothing outlasts the Energizer from EverReady. Nothing outsnaps it, nothing outadds, outwalks, outtapes, outshines, outlasts it. Nothing. About two years and still energized. The Energizer, energized for life.
long life. Energize me. It's bragging rights time in the state of Alabama, the 47th meeting between the Crimson Tide and the Auburn Tigers. The Auburn football program resurgent under coach Pat Dye. Tigers have won seven, only one loss decisive, that to Nebraska. Alabama has stumbled three times, losing the last two. Paul Bryant's Alabama teams have never lost three games in a row in the same season. And you can see losing the last two to LSU and Southern Mississippi. So stay tuned as ABC Sports brings you Auburn, Alabama after this word from your local station. Saturday, Hooker goes to the wall to save a kid from the gang, but it could cost him his life. Then, Gopher's in a tight squeeze when he meets the lady who lights up his life on the love boat. And a reporter scoops a surprise headline, Fantasy Island is a fraud. What? There's something here. Something wonderful. E.T. glasses have come to your hometown. E.T. glasses showing four unforgettable moments with E.T. And where can you find them? Pizza Hut. Just order a medium or large Pizza Hut pan pizza and get two 16-ounce E.T. glasses for 99 cents. Collect all four E.T. glasses only at Pizza Hut. If you could create your very own way to bank, you create the right card. A card that knows you by name, lets you check your account balance, make deposits, and gives you cash all 24 hours a day at all the right places. But you don't have to create it. Just ask for yours today at First Alabama. The right card, a great new way to lean on the green. Lean on the green. W.K.A.B. Montgomery. ABC Sports presents our 20th year of NCAA football. Among the many memories from those years, let's go back one year. Birmingham. As Alabama's Bear Bryant coaches his 315th career victory against arch rival Auburn, breaking Amos Alonzo Stagg's all time winning mark. Today, many of the same people in the same place in the same fracas. There is one new face for the Auburn Tigers 224 pound running back Bo Jackson, teaming with a scat back Lionel James. They are the prime punchers for Auburn. Quarterback Walter Lewis will lead the Tide offense, one of the most versatile and dangerous players in the country at that position. We are USA One. And number one is taking charge in high technology transportation. With some of the highest mileage numbers in cars like the diesel Chevette. Taking charge in four-wheel drive with new S10 blazers and pickups. And the versatile Chevy Citation, Chevrolet, America's sales leader, is taking it to the limit. USA One is taking charge. I was known as one of the meanest players in hockey, but I didn't deserve that, right? <laughs> right. I'm just a nice guy who comes in and has a few light beers from Miller with the boys. A pussycat who drinks light because it's less filling, and it tastes great, really. If I was a nasty player, may a lightning bolt come down and strike this very spot. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Auburn and Alabama, both seven and three, and both headed for postseason bowl games. They call it in Alabama the Iron Bowl. And this is the 1982 edition. The series reflected there, and uh, if it is in fact the Iron Bowl, you can expect a whole lot of scrap iron to be left when the scuffling is done today, because they really get after each other in this old long-running series. Right now, the home team, Alabama, 
entering Legion Field. Alabama headed for the Liberty Bowl against Illinois. The coach, Paul Bryant, his 25th year at Tuscaloosa, the winningest coach of all time over his 37 years as the head coach, 322 wins, 84 losses, and 17 ties. Yeah, he's counting the house. They split the gate 50-50. And now here comes the Auburn Tigers, seven and three, headed for the Tangerine Bowl against Boston College. Pat Dye, the head coach, his second year. Jackson. This has without question been a disappointing season for Paul Bryant and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. About uh, the midway of the season, they had that big win over Penn State, 42-21. Myself, a lot of people in this country, Paul Bryant, thought this might be one of the best Alabama teams ever. But since that time, there have been three losses. And it's accelerated rumors that Bryant at age 69 would quit at the end of this season. Last night, he told me emphatically, no. Frank Broyles, known him all these years, visited with him just recently. He told you, no, he certainly did. He's previously, previously expressed to me many times that he wanted to coach until they told him that he couldn't or he wanted to be drug out in a box. But let's not forget his winning record because in terms of winning, Eddie Robinson of, Ro of Grambling is only 14 games behind him. And I don't think he wants to quit until he's firmly established as the winning coach of all time. One of the problems, though, that goes with this rumor that he's going to quit is the element of recruiting because obviously other coaches are saying, particularly the skilled people, that mamas and daddies, the old man may not be there next year. Bear has found himself in a strange position. He's established himself as the greatest coach in America, and now he's got to reestablish himself that he can continue to coach because of his age. And the mamas and the daddies and these great prospects have got to be convinced of that, or they will go right over to Auburn. One of the interesting things, too, about this ball game, since Pat and I coached under Paul at Alabama, I get the feeling that Paul Bryant today is worried more about Pat Dye than Pat Dye is worried about Paul Bryant. Well, he did not want Pat Dye to come to Auburn. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he hadn't dangled this Alabama job in front of him if he'd stay away. And the reason is that Pat's a great football coach. He doesn't want to coach against Pat. Pat, he cannot psych Pat out like he has the Auburn coaches of the past when he would say, we should always beat Auburn. We're the state university. I would say that knowing both men as well as I know him, that Pat is almost a mirror of Bryant. I think that he is. He's, he has the same style, the same substance, the same personality pretty much, and he believes in coaching people and not football, and that's their strength. It is a sellout at Legion Field in Birmingham. They split the ticket sales 50-50. It's going to be noisy, and it's going to be a lot of fun. NCAA College Football, Auburn versus Alabama. Brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet is USA One, and USA One is taking charge. By Maxwell House, the coffee that always gives you that good to the last drop feeling. By the Bell System, put the Bell Network to work for your business. And by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. For some people, the words laser beams conjure up images of distant galaxies in outer space. But Xerox scientists saw the laser as a ray of hope for increasing productivity and introduced it into the office. Today, Xerox lasers help make Xerox electronic printers the most advanced information output systems available. They take information from computers and word processors and print it out at incredible speeds. Other Xerox scientists are using laser and electronic technology to develop data entry machines that help computers speed read. They actually translate printed words into computer language 12 times faster than manual methods. 
while still other Xerox scientists are using laser and optical technologies to bring back images from spaceships like Voyagers 1 and 2. Xerox technology. It's helping increase productivity in offices all over the world and beyond. A look down on the city of Birmingham, Alabama. On a day with a temperature in the low 60s, it is a gray, overcast kind of a day. Legion Field, however, is one of the most colorful places in the country, always when Auburn and Alabama get together. And the Crimson Tide will kick off. Terry Sanders, the sophomore from Birmingham, will hit the ball. Lionel James, the junior for Auburn, waits for it deep in the end zone. There will be no return. Looking now at the offensive backfield, Randy Campbell. They told him a year ago he couldn't play quarterback, but look what he's done. And Bo Jackson, the big freshman from Bessemer, powerhouse of a man. Lionel James, the speedster, little guy, can fly. Ron O'Neill, big fullback, 5'9", 245. Wide out is Mike Edwards, 6'4", 194, big man with good speed. And now we come to the first play of the ball game. Auburn wearing the white. And Campbell sets him up out of the wishbone formation. And they will run the triple option most of the time. But you can expect today probably to see him working some out of the line. The ball goes to Bo Jackson, the freshman from the 20. He's got two out to about the 22. Making the tackle, Eddie Lowe for Alabama, the weak side linebacker. Eddie Lowe is not very big for a linebacker, but what Bear believes in is speed and quickness. Eddie's only 5'11", 190 pounds, but he knows where the football is. He, is. he reads very quickly, then he can react and come up with a good tackle to stop Jackson number 34. And it's second down and eight for Auburn from their own 22. Same formation, double wide. And the pitch goes back to Lionel James. He's got a big hole around the corner. He gets it up to the 27, wrestles to the 28, and there he is stopped by Al Blue, the free safety. The Auburn offensive front shapes up with Ed West, the tight end, 6'1", 245, primarily a blocker. Steve Wallace at tackle, 265, a freshman. David Jordan at guard, 266, a junior. Bishop Reeves, a center, 255, a senior. Randy Stokes, 256, freshman at guard. And Pat Arrington, 263, junior at tackle. War Eagle, they call him. It's third down and two from the 28-yard line as Campbell goes down the line on the option, goes outside with it. Look what I found. Pitch to Bo Jackson, tries to get around the corner, slides across the 30. And that football almost got loose to Stan Gay. The right side cornerback brings him down. The advance is just short of the 30. It'll bring up fourth down. Defensively, Alabama's unit, Russ Wood, Randy Edwards, Mike Rodriguez, Jackie Klein, Mike Pitts, backers of Booker and Lowe, the secondary, Castile, Gay, Colburn, Blue. Now, Auburn won't fool around with it with fourth and a half a yard. They'll punt it out of there. Lewis Colbert, a sophomore from Phoenix City, will punt it. This young man is quite a story. He has a club foot. Doesn't bother him. Athlete. Gets his kick out of there. Sort of a tail dragger that takes a high bounce and kicks out of bounds. He didn't get a whole lot of yardage out of it. And Colbert was rattled after he came back down to the ground, but no penalty flag. He only got 30 yards. Walter Lewis will start at quarterback. A junior for Alabama. Paul Carruth will be at the halfback spot, 210 pounds. Jeff Fagan, the fullback, 200 pounds. And Ricky Moore uh, in the fullback position at uh, 235. Joey Jones is one wide out, 5'9", 165. And the tight end, or actually a second wide out, will be Jesse Bendross, number 88. And we'll try some new formations today, breaking the bone against Auburn. And Walter Lewis back to throw on first down. He's going big for Joey Jones. He missed him. And it is incomplete. There was contact once the ball was gone, but no contact in the vicinity of the ball and we'll isolate on Joey Jones and see what kind of a threat he can be. Joey Jones is excellent at running his pass routes and he has outstanding speed. He gets behind Drinker number 80. The key is watch Drinker turn his head. If he doesn't play the ball, he turns just in time to play the ball and knock it away. Otherwise, it might have been pass interference. Yeah, that back judge was reaching for the flag and then he turned his head and that saved him. It is second down and 10 for Alabama from their own 40. Out of the wishbone now. And Jones is wide to the left side, and Walter Lewis is out there naked by himself and takes a lick. 
as he gets it up to the 44 Scott Riley defensive end knocks him down a senior from Birmingham Alabama's offensive front Jesse Bendross lining up at the tight end he is a speedster Doug Vickers 248 pound junior at tackle Gary Bramlett 252 senior at guard Steve Mott the center 250 a senior Mike Adcock 245 pound junior at guard and Bob Kayavec 252 a senior at tackle the ball is on the Alabama 44 it is third down and six Ben Ross to the top of the picture, Joey Jones to the wide side of the field, and Lewis is back to throw it, getting some heat, sets up the screen. The pass is knocked off to the fullback Moore. Moore gets an Alabama first down as he crosses midfield and goes to about the Auburn 44. What a great call. Third and long, wishbone teams aren't known for their possession-type passing, and one of the best plays for the wishbone would be the screen. Easy throw, you treat it kind of sort of like a running play. You just lay it out to your fullback, get a couple linemen out in front of you, and it's the first down. Excellent execution by the Alabama offense. Tied working now at the Plainsman's 44. Ben Dross now comes to the open side of the field, the bottom of the picture with Joey Jones to the top. They break the bone again. And Lewis is straight back. Alabama opening up with the pass. Again, same play the other way. Ball goes to Ricky Moore. Moore throws some moves, gets four as he pounces to about the 40-yard line. Defensively for Auburn, this is the way they line up with Riley Smith, Orkman, Thomas, and Jackson along the front. Carr Martin, they are the linebackers. The secondary, King, Drinkard, Collier, and Harris. Dorman is still hurt, not in there. First quarter of play in Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. Second down, six Alabama. Ball on the Auburn 40. No score, first quarter. Lewis going down the line, pitches the ball to Carruth. Carruth trying to turn the corner. Good defensive play by 43, Chris Martin. A 42 it was uh, coming across to make the hit for Auburn. Alabama with two split receivers, Ben Dross and Jones, opens up the secondary and gives some room for running, and that's their strategy, trying to break out the Auburn defense from being bunched inside where they're very strong. There is some wind on the field. It is a bowl, and the wind tends to swirl around. It'll be troublesome. Third down, they need three. Lewis gonna put it in the air. He goes to the sidelines for Jones, and Jones is out of bounds. Pass is incomplete. Jones, the wide receiver, into the boundary. Make the defensive back think deep. That was the move that he just put on. Turn, get eye, establish eye contact with the ball, and it's a, the pass is a little bit late. He's got one foot in bounds, but he didn't have control of. He's still juggling the ball right there when he fell out. It is fourth down. It's close. Three for Alabama at the Auburn 37. Ben Ross and Jones come out. All right, we'll punt it. Now we have no, the quarterback. We, they're shifting up. They're going to go. Something tricky is Fourth there. and three as Lewis came back in uh, in a short punt formation. And all that fiddling around has done is uh, use up time on the clock. And it's going to cost Alabama five yards. And now Simmons will come in to do the punting. Malcolm Simmons, who is averaging in 1982 just over 43 yards per punt. And in his career, just under 44. Play, offense. 25 second count. If you examine the record, there is known for his shifting in and out of punt formation on short yardage to try to draw the defense offside. There are your officials for today the referee, Bob Allier, Harold Johnson, uh, Norbert Ackerman, Bob Caldwell, Joe Delaney, Billy Tees. And Simmons will try to hang it up there. He's not going to be able to. That's going to hit on the goal line and bounce onto the end zone. It was Lewis. Lewis did the punting. So Lewis stayed in there. There's a penalty flag on the field. We'll check it when we come back. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. The Congratulations. Your coach's a pretty mean game. Well, I had a pretty good teacher. Did I teach you the part about the winning coach buying the loan, Brown? You got it. Give me 10 minutes. I got to go yell at my players. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. So tell me, what'd you say to your teacher? 
told him we were out coast. Burlington Fabrics weave their way through your life every day in surfboards, in skis. Fabrics for new soft luggage. Fabrics for the great outdoor life. All made better by Burlington. Fabrics for hang gliding and sailing. Fabrics that make tires stronger. Even fabrics for far away journeys. All made better by Burlington. The Goodyear Blimp America out of Houston. Took three days to get it over here from Houston. Pilot is Larry Chambers out of Spring, Texas. No flag, they picked it up. Malcolm Simmons went in, the punter, he lined up in a slot back position, and Walter Lewis, the quarterback, did the punting. Look out for that one later today. I'm surprised he showed it this soon. Auburn to the attack from the 20. Randy Campbell, the quarterback, keeps on the option, turns it upfield for two yards where Eddie Lowe brings him down. Many times coaches would tell you size is important, but really instincts at linebacker is really what makes them great. They somehow know where the ball is. Eddie Lowe, number 57, did not take the fate of the dive back. He moved right to the outside. Something told him it was going to be the option play that makes the tackle. Younger brother of an All-American here at Alabama, Woodrow Lowe. Woody, going on to a fine career in professional football. Second down and eight for Auburn. They take it inside. Here's Campbell's first pass of the day. Got a man. It's good. The pass is caught up at the 39-yard line by Chris Woods, a junior from Birmingham. When you, the defense... And, and start trying to stop the wishbone leaves the wide receiver pretty much open for the intermediate patterns and you can see Woods number one breaks to the outside he cradles the ball inside for the first down holds on to it Campbell is a 52 percent passer which is pretty good for the wishbone these yep. days and Woods is the leading receiver that's his 20th catch of the season first down for the Tigers at their own 39 as they pick up 17 yards on that play. Take it inside on the fake. Campbell keeps it. A lot of red shirts after it. And he moves out near the 44 for the better part of five yards. Russ Wood brings him down. Randy Campbell, the quarterback for Auburn, is a story himself as we look at the two coaches. Randy was not able to make the team last year and played split in. A new offensive coach joined Pat Dye's staff, and he worked his way up to the starting quarterback simply because he doesn't make mistakes. Auburn leads the nation in the fewest number of turnovers, 13 for the season, and, and only two interceptions out of 145 attempts. Not too bad. Second down, about six. They go inside. And it's out to the 48. Bo Jackson is a freshman, 6'1", 224 pounds from Bessemer. And they really think he's going to be a dandy. Pat Dye says he's the second best talent in the Southeastern Conference, meaning to Herschel Walker. Jackson has tremendous speed. He's running from the right halfback position, meaning he's running to the left, Keith. And it's more difficult to make the cuts for a, right, a natural right-hander going to the left. There you see the yardage gained by the two leading ball carriers for Auburn. And Lionel James, little guy, but boy, he's dynamite, and he runs very well in traffic. Alabama sets up a six-man front. They get the ball to James, and uh, they run into a bus. And he stops right about the line of scrimmage. Mike Pitts, big 255-pound senior from Baltimore, makes the stop. It'll be fourth down. And they need a yard. It appears that Auburn will take the chance here. The ball's still on their own 47-yard line. They appear to be go, go, go for it. Wishbone attack should be able to make it. But the, Auburn has not run a play up the middle so far in this ball game. That has been successful. That has been successful. That's correct. Well, I tell you, I think this is the game. Greg make. Pratt, sophomore, 220 pounder out of Albany, Georgia, comes in and sticks his head in the pile, and it's close, Frank. It it pins entirely on the on the spot of the official, and I don't believe that he made it. I cannot see the spot from here. They will measure. So Bob Allier wants the chain on to make sure it's that close. But that's a considerable risk from your own 48 needing a good yard trying to stick your head in against an Alabama defense that has had been raked over the coals the last couple of weeks by the coaching staff because they have not played all that well. Tommy Wilcox has now come on the field. Tommy has been hurt. Didn't make it. Tommy came out, had a look, 
and comes right back off and now timeout is called with six minutes and 56 seconds to play in the first quarter Alabama holds Auburn and takes over the ball at the Auburn 49. I've been hearing the so-called sports expert talk about his realistic home video baseball game. Well, I've played real baseball. And I also played the new Atari Real Sports Baseball, and I like it. Because I can hit and run, steal, pick off runners. Hey, it's baseball like baseball should be played. And who are you going to listen to anyhow? That other guy who just talks baseball? Or a nice guy like me who lives it? New Real Sports Baseball, one in a series only from Atari. Oh, but what about Pittsburgh? Oh, I can't go. The board's waiting. <laughs> but we're booked to Dallas. You can handle it, Charlie. The trip to New York. When there's no time to travel to meetings, meet through the Bell Network with a teleconference. Save time with a speaker phone. Good idea. Get more done with a fully equipped conference room. Or picture phone meeting service, which lets you see, show, demonstrate. Bell has the knowledge. Well, let's go with your plan. We'll show you how to manage it. The knowledge business. Because they're fun, high school activities attract millions of participants each year. The National Federation of State High School Associations urges your support for these activities so essential in the development of America's youth. Well, let's see if that gamble by Pat Dye and the Auburn Tigers backfires on them now as Alabama gets the ball first down on the Auburn 49. Walter Lewis is the quarterback out of the full wishbone. And Lewis coming left. Good runner. And he's down to the 45 for four yards. Greg Carr made the stop, a sophomore from Birmingham for Auburn. Frank, you were uh, noting a moment ago while we were away that Alabama has turned the ball over a lot this year, some, what, 30-odd times, and uh, it seemed uh, strange that they wouldn't kick that ball on down there and let Alabama have a chance to make a mistake. The team has a tendency to self-destruct. Let them handle the ball on their end of the field. When, you make a, when they make a mistake, you have great scoring opportunities. Most coaches believe in that theory. Joe Carter is now in the backfield, number 46, as they break the bone. And they've got Jones wide out. And Lewis gives it to Joe Jones on the reverse. Auburn played it very well. They force him wide, but Jones has great speed. And Joe's quick feet gets him around the corner as he jukes an Auburn defender and gets a first down for Alabama, down around the 33. David King and Tim Drinker finally get him out of bounds. The reverse play has always been something. When I was coaching against the wishbone, it scared me to death. You have to take off and try to stop the option so quickly that you leave yourself vulnerable. 92, Riley just gets out maneuvered by Jones and he turns downfield and makes a nice play. See that big old center Steve Mott downfield throwing a block as well. So it's first down Alabama at the Auburn 33. And Lewis gives, takes it out of the three backs. Beller keeps it himself, gets the 30 for three yards, hit hard by Chris Martin. Christopher nailed him. He's a senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. The wait. Coming up next Saturday, another traditional Arkansas and Texas. Arkansas headed for the Blue Bonnet Bowl and Texas going to the Sun Bowl, but that's one of those jaw-to-jaw -jaw jobs where they, at least for an afternoon, they don't care much of each other. It'll be fun to watch, won't it? Yeah, both teams feel that they can play with any football team in America, and Texas is really on an upswing right now. Second down with about seven. As Lewis gives the ball inside this time, he let the fullback have it and Ricky Moore. The big sophomore from Huntsville punches in there and gets another first down for Alabama. And so now the Tide marching along. They're down on the Auburn 22 with five minutes and 20 seconds to play in the first quarter and no score. The first leg of the wishbone is to pull back up the middle. The center, Steve Bott, Mike Edcock, and Gary Bramlett opened up a nice hold. Some coaches feel that you just got to establish that fullback first before you can go outside. Joe Carter in at a halfback spot now. He's a junior from Starkville, Mississippi. Lewis back to throw it. He's got Jones over the middle, down to the corner, and it is incomplete. I think if Joey Jones had stayed on his route toward uh, the goalpost, he might have broken totally free, but he turned it back into the corner, and the pass was late. The strong move to the inside, as Keith said, was to the goalpost. Number 27, King, is an outstanding defender for Auburn. Leads the team in interceptions and very good on man-to-man -man coverage. But 
patterns what we call a post corner. Ben Ross to the left, Jones to the right. Second down and 10, Lewis back. He looks over the middle, he's got a man, Jones, he's out of the end zone. Oh, they get him the touchdown. He flagged the foot. He looked me like he was going to sail right out of the end zone, but he had to drag a foot down. And it goes for a 22-yard touchdown. Jones is the only receiver on either team that's caught over two passes of the ball game. Let's see if he is, in fact, legal with the reception. Remember that Jones has to make contact with the ground before he goes out of the end zone. Let's see what happens. He got his left got foot his, down. What a play. Oh, is that concentration? <laughs> Outstanding play by Jones. Just barely touched that left foot down. Peter Kim is in for the extra point try, and it is good. With 4.44 to go in the first quarter, 7-0 Alabama. And Auburn's gamble did have a short view. Here's to good friends tonight. Hey, chicken and ribs, the chicken and ribs, Jack. Steak, Must say Jack. Something more somehow. Chili. Homemade oh, chili. Good work. Hey, wait a minute. What did you bring besides your list? Just a little something I threw together. I should have known. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low. Okay, everybody, let's go win this one. Who makes the best-selling radials in America? Goodyear. We outsell all foreign radials combined. One reason, the Goodyear Arriva. It gives you long tread life. And best of all, all-season traction in the wet stuff and the white stuff. The Goodyear all-season Arriva. It's one reason Goodyear is the leader in radials. No foreign maker of radials even comes close. When you need radials, come up to Goodyear. Year after year, there is one amateur boxing rivalry like no other. The top two teams in the world, the U.S. and Cuba, next on ABC. Again, a look down on the city of Birmingham. Kind of a gray, overcast day, but it's dry and fairly comfortable with the temperature in the low 60s. 7 0 Alabama first quarter. Terry Sanders kicks it off. Lionel James deep to Auburn hangs it up. James may have a chance with this in three yards deep. He's coming out. And he brings it out just short of the 25. Another look at the Alabama touchdown. Al Alabama offensive formation is stretching the defense. Two wide outs. And you can see what happens when you can stretch the defense wide. The middle is open. And you can see how wide open Jones number four is. And he makes a sensational catch, dragging his left foot. One foot is all the college rule needs to be a legal receptor. Here it is again. You can see that King is beaten on the plate, number 27. There's the drag of the foot. Control the ball, touchdown. Auburn comes to the attack on the first down. They go inside, and boy, I'll tell you, the Red Elephants jump all over Greg Pratt as he punches it over the 25 out to about the 27. It'll be second down and eight. And those are the figures on the Alabama scoring drive. As Auburn gambled on fourth and one, Aaron gave the ball up on their own 49, and Tide took it in. You can see the emotions that the Alabama team are playing with today. They know how important this game is for their program. Bear has made that clear, clear to them. They've got a five-man front up there right now against Auburn. And Campbell hands the ball inside. And Greg Pratt again, and there just isn't a lot of room right now in the middle of the Alabama defense. As we look at Bear Bryant on Wednesday, the last remark that he made to his team went like this. Men, you better fight when you're out there or don't plan to be back next year. And he meant it, too. Ball is on the 29. Where it is third down and six. Campbell, stand up. Hopper, no. Pass intended for Mike Edwards. Good plan. Edwards had the size advantage on the Alabama defender, but the pass was a little beyond his grasp. And so Auburn will have to punt. The last kick we had was a 30-yarder from Lewis Colbert. 
Keith, Alabama tried to block the last one. They must have some scouting for it, thinking that they could go and maybe block. They're going to send 10. Paul Carruth is the deep man for Alabama. And 10 are going. And he gets it out of there, and it's a pretty good kick. Carruth backs up and takes the ball. It is 27. And comes back to the 31. It was a 44-yard punt by Colbert. Tackle made by Willie Howell. 3-11 to play first quarter. Alabama leading Auburn 7 to nothing. The last thing I want is for my boy to get hurt. <laughs> so I gave him an Arelco. It treats him with tender, loving care. <laughs> Doesn't nick or cut like blades can and shaves his face baby smooth. <laughs> he loves his Norelco because it cuts down whiskers like Mark Gastineau cuts down quarterbacks. Right, Mom. I swear by my Norelco. I wish he wouldn't swear. Norelco Road Attract. Tough on your beard, not on your face. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge with the all-new S10 Maxi Cab. Ford Ranger and Toyota don't even have one. Taking charge of people space with available seating for four. Compared to Datsun's extended cab, Maxi Cab has up to 40% more load space. Available V6 power you can't get in Ford Ranger or the import trucks. S10 Maxi Cab from America's truck sales leader. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. Last year, Arkansas ran hog wild over Texas, trampling their hopes for the national championship. Next Saturday, Texas wants revenge. A Southwest shootout on ABC. Alabama's football. Call it the 31. And Walter Lewis stays at quarterback with Lenny Patrick in the ball game for the first time with Joe Carter. The fullback is Ricky Moore. And it's Carter up in the slot with Lewis on a rollout left. He'll pull it down or he'll throw it. Oh he to throw it. And he throws it to Joey Jones. And the little man, 5'9, 165, a junior from Mobile, is suddenly a very big figure in this ball game. Jones had only caught 22 passes. That's just over in 10 ball games, just over two a game, but does have a 19 yard average because the wishbone forces the defense to crowd the line of scrimmage, opening up the passing lanes. They have now taken Ben Ross out at the tight end position, and they have put in Jay Grogan, number 27, who goes wide to the top of the picture. And it's a first down for Alabama, just over their own 45, handed off inside to the fullback Ricky Moore. And Moore hits midfield and just nudges the ball across midfield. Greg Carr, number 54, is just a sophomore, but the Auburn coaches say he may be the best sophomore linebacker they've ever seen. Here's a good illustration of why they say that. He takes on the block, care back, 71, brings off the block, and makes the tackle. He's an exceptional student as well. Pretty close to straight A. Second down for Craig Turner. Now. Big pullback, 200 pounder or so is in there. Here's Walter Lewis again, throw this time out of bounds. Ben Ross had come down, going into the ball game as a wide out, and had come down to the sidelines, but Jesse was about three yards out of bounds. One thing we should point out, that Walter Lewis is probably the best, may be the equal of any runner that Alabama has. He's also an outstanding passer, and when he rolls out, that puts just a terrible defensive responsibility on the defensive end and cornerback as to whether to come up or lay back. Lewis is now four out of eight, 53 yards for a touchdown. Rogan comes out. Ben Ross and Jones now are your wideouts for Alabama. Craig Turner is a very strong, straight-ahead runner. Third down, four. Lewis outside. Goes to Patrick. Patrick, big game. Inside the Auburn 30, down to the Tigers 28. First down, Alabama. Triple option, fake to the fullback. Then defensive end takes the quarterback, elects to take the quarterback, and then Patrick, number 25, gets a block from 88. Ben Droth cuts back inside for the first down. I've been there, Keith, trying to defense the wishbone when you can throw and run off the wishbone. Watch out. Ball is just inside. The Auburn 29. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. Hyde leads 7 0. Lewis flips it deep. 
Joe Carter has the ball. Fumble. Auburn's got it. The ball popped up in the air. It's a foot race to the goal line. And Lewis is after him. And Walter Lewis makes the tackle on Tim Tinkert, saving the touchdown. up in the air and Tim Trinkard the quarterback plucked it and away he flew for 62 yards let's watch it again tremendous tackle by one Auburn football player that hit here hit the ball drink at number 18 the defensive quarterback watch him run he has a couple of blocks Lewis being a four six speed finally catches him but it's 62 yard return and first down Auburn at the Alabama 14. let's see if the Tigers can catch it in they give it to their fullback Greg Pratt and Pratt is whoa back from the line of scrimmage let's watch the play again you can see that it's just a pitch back the card the ball bounces right up in the air number 18 drink it catches it and runs right down the field well, that's, that's the low point, too, Frank, that he caught it in the air. In the air. Otherwise, he could not have advanced it. <laughs> Got a paper sack going out on the field, so they have to get that out of the way. There was no gain by Pratt on the play up the middle. Auburn hasn't gained very, well, maybe a foot all day up the middle against Alabama. In this game last year, Auburn in the first half missed three field goal opportunities and a half, had a pass intercepted by Alabama on the one-yard line. Second down and 10 from the tied 14. Campbell going to throw. Goes for work. Too high. Incomplete. It'll be third down and 10 from the Alabama 14. Quick out pattern this close to the goal line is seldom effective because the defense do not have to cover deep and then jump right on the wide receiver and covering very tightly and that was the case. They've marked that ball closer to the 13 now. So they've moved it up at least a foot and a half before they had it marked before. Auburn running about 37% on third down conversions over the season. They run a little delay to Lionel James. Touchdown! Great blocking by the Auburn offensive front. <laughs> Jeremiah Castillo just simply couldn't hold. Uh, the uh, Auburn running back, James Lyon, was only 5'7", 170 pounds, but he's a tough little guy. Now for the extra point try. Al Del Greco, a junior from Keepers King, Florida, picks it up and through. With 54 seconds to play in the first quarter, we are even. Alabama 7 and now Auburn 7. As they recover the fumble in midair, and Tim Drinkard runs it down to the 14, and Lionel James took it in, and here's the play. Fake pass and run. Then you let the lineman cross uh, the line of scrimmage and invite him and block him outside. You see what a beautiful hole, big hole, Pat Arrington, and then a great block by someone number 64 from Auburn, who is just a freshman, by the way. Lot. And you, James takes it in for the touchdown. Here from the ground level, watch the blocking. Invite number 98 Klein to cross the line. He takes himself out of the plate. That's what creates the hole. Then the leading block, 64, leading right through there, makes a key block. And James, number six, takes him right in for the touchdown. Number 64 is Randy Stokes. But when you cross up the defense, it's risky, but it worked that time, Keith. Del Greco will kick off for Auburn now. Joey Jones and Paul Carruth are the deep people for Alabama. So the Plainsmen get on the board with 54 seconds to play in the first quarter. Del Greco hangs it up there. And Carruth will come back with it a yard deep in the end zone. Oh, look at this. 
fine return by Paul Carew. He, to me, is a lot like Major Ogilvy was at Alabama. Not a whole lot of speed, not flashy. He just ran the ball north and south. That's what Carew does. But he has a, a willingness that forces you to play him tough. Every good football team has players like Carew, what we call winners, mean they do the best they can on every play. So that return from a yard deep in the end zone out to the 33 and Ken Coley a senior from Birmingham is in at quarterback now for Alabama Coley more a runner than a thrower but very good on the triple option Gonna put it up he loops it downfield and it is incomplete making a try for the interception for Auburn but Nothing there. It was Mark Dormany who has been hurt, number 46, but who is back out there now for Auburn. And it could be the Miami Tampa Bay War on ABC's presentation of Monday Night Football next Monday. And followed on Thursday by one out on the West Coast that has a lot to it the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. Both of them at 9 Eastern Time. From the Alabama 33, second down in 10. Coley keeps it. Ken Coley has had three knee operations during his playing days at Alabama. But uh, this is another one of those ball players that just won't quit. And there's a fellow right there that won't quit. Pat Dye, who is exhorting his Tigers. Coaching constantly. As a rule, third and long for Alabama is a running down. Just the opposite of what we've been watching all year with teams that stress the passing game. Third and six. Coley. He took Got a first down. Ken Coley goes to the Auburn 49. Chuck Clinton brings him down, a junior from Pensacola. We just witnessed the quickness of Coley, the quarterback. He mentioned that he is very good on option play because he is fast and quick. And the first quarter is over at Legion Field in Birmingham with the Crimson Tide of the Tigers all even at seven. Ooh, we'll be up all night doing your homework. Don't worry, Dad. I just put energizers in the calculator. Of all leading battery brands, nothing outlasts the Energizer from EverReady. Nothing outsnaps it, nothing outadds, outwalks, outplays, outtapes, outshines, outlasts it. Nothing. The Energizer even outlasted Dad. The Energizer, energize for life. Long life. Energize me. I do one thing. They're number 40, 150. And when you concentrate on one thing, and 180, 9999, you can be the best. Two, nine, two, do you want a bit? $200 sold, $200 to the lady. Just like Kentucky Fried Chicken. They concentrate on chicken. Chicken done right. Is that all you got to say? Nope, it's fresh, tender, tasty, delicious. My favorite dish is Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's finger licking good. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Some people say of Mr. Goodrange, only for big jobs. Me, I'm a professional myself. So I see him for even simple jobs, like breaks. A good technician doesn't just slap dash a job together. He keeps his eyes open. Look what we spotted. Yeah, trouble. Well, you better fix it now. Could head off big trouble later. And big expense. Keep that great GM feeling. Mr. Goodrange, he's a pro. With genuine GM parts. John Houseman for the investment firm of Smith Barney. Buy low, sell high. Every investor's goal. But the astutely managed portfolio strikes a balance of the right investments. It should anticipate any eventuality. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn. We start the second quarter. 7-7 ball game. Alabama's ball. Auburn 49. Alabama's second unit in. Along the front, it's Beasley. Uh, it's Holcomb and uh, McQueen. Jackson, Sism, Ivy. So the Bear doing what he has done through all the years when he has had the depth. He plays them. And when he get down to the fourth quarter, he's got more fresh folks. Normally. 
There are your numbers off that first quarter of play. You see that Alabama had the upper hand in every category. Auburn was not able to do much offensively. They need to get their offense going and get some good field position. One of the officials is having an ankle tape, so we've got a little time out here for him. Keith, you mentioned about Alabama playing so many players. It's quite common that they do this for a number of reasons. One is the freshness in the fourth quarter. Another is morale. It gets a lot of people to play. It helps the practices during the week. All right. We're ready to go now. Rob Allier sets the ball, and the clock starts. The first play of the second quarter. And Ken Coley is the quarterback. Maybe checking off. Long count. Rides it off to his fullback. On the fullback, Ricky Moore is loose for a big game. Inside the Auburn 30, down to the Tiger 28 goes Ricky Moore. Boy, he's a big one. He stands six feet, but he weighs 235 pounds, and he can rumble. He played a lot as a freshman last year. You can see the blocking of the wishbone when the outside people start thinking quarterback and pitch. The fullback opens up in a good block by Grogan, number 27. Right there, you can see the wide receivers for Alabama and wishbone teams have to be good blockers as well as ability to catch the ball. Carruth is now in at the halfback, the left half spot, replacing Lenny Patrick for Alabama. First down, ball just short of the Auburn 28. Coley down the line. Here's the reverse. Ken Goss with the ball, gets a good block. Turns it back around the corner and then pays for it at the Auburn 25. I'll tell you one fellow in that Auburn secondary who is a hitter, Frank, a sophomore out of Fairhope, David King. At number 27, will lay a lick on you. King started as a freshman. In fact, he made the starting lineup before the first game in the 81 season. He started every game since, number 27. Good quickness, good tackle. Second down and seven, Alabama, Auburn 25. Alabama trying to break the 7-7 seven, seven tie in this possession. Get that ball off inside again to pull back Moore. And Moore's got the ball at the 22 for three yards. So they'll be looking at third and about five. Doug Smith, the left defensive tackle for Auburn, is 6'6", six, six, weighs 265. Altman, the guard, is 6'2", 263. Thomas 6'5, 267. So that middle is for Auburn is very big. Doug Vickers comes back in at the right side tackle position for Alabama now. Right here. The junior from Enterprise, Alabama. Throws the ball at the Auburn 22, third down. I call it four. Long four. Coley on the option, hands inside. And it's Ricky Moore again, the fullback carrying to the 19, possibly the 18. If he's got the 18, he's got a first down. Very, very close. Moore now has carried five times in the game. And Ricky's got 39 yards. It'll be fourth down. And they need the better part of a yard. And Alabama calls timeout with 13 seconds to go in the first half. And the score tied at Legion Field at Birmingham at 7-7. Seven, seven. I'm about to show you something new for in television that will revolutionize the way video games are played and compared. First, here's a popular Atari game. Now, don't look. And here's new Space Spartans for the IntelliVoice module. Hello, Commander. Space One, under attack. The battle is over. New IntelliVoice. Now that IntelliVision talks, you can tell the difference with your eyes closed. End of shift, the new day's dawning. Partner's late, but the coffee's warming. Here's the way you share your morning. Maxwell House and you. Get that job good to the last drop feeling. With Maxwell House, only Maxwell House gives you good to the last drop feeling. Maxwell House. 
Olympic great Theophilos Stevenson and world champion Tyrell Biggs battle. Bikers attack the grueling course at Carlsbad. Plus, Elaine Zayak and Scott Hamilton dazzle today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Alabama owns the ball at the Auburn 19, fourth down, yard to go. They've done pretty well on fourth down conversion tries this year, 80%. didn't do it that time. Gave the ball to Craig Turner, who has become something of a specialist for them in short yardage plays, and he just didn't make it. Number 28 came up out of the secondary. Bob Harris, the strong safety, big strong fella at 6'2", 205, and he just flat nailed him down right at the line of scrimmage. Keith, that's a crucial play. When you stop a team on fourth and short yards close to your goal line, it has sweeping effects on your morale, your momentum and the motion of your football team. Harris, number 28, strong safety. A outstanding football player. Many say he's an All-American player. Watch him make the play. He reads it quickly, and he crashes right through because there was no threat of the option, and Alabama had left the whistle and gone to the high formation. And back to the live action as Auburn goes to Bo Jackson, and Jackson goes into the middle from the 19 to the 21 for two yards, second down and eight coming up. Pat Dye gambled on fourth down. Alabama scored from 49 yards out. Now Auburn has uh, withstood an Alabama gamble on fourth and one, disdaining the field goal. And here's the pitch to Lionel James. James, who scored the Auburn touchdown, gets around the corner and up to the 24. Emmanuel King in at the defensive end position now for Alabama makes the tackle. In the running department, Alabama with 112 yards of the ball game so far. Auburn with 43. And Keith, we should make the point that Auburn has left the wishbone there in an I formation with Jackson at fullback, James at tailback, and two tight ends. Having Jackson at fullback, as Pat Nye said to me yesterday, they hope they can pop the big guy through there quickly. But Alabama being so fierce in its rush, they'll sometimes overrun it. Randy Campbell, the quarterback, trying to option it around the corner, calling his own number, and he comes up short by a yard and a half as King and Wood make the tackle. In trying to defense the wishbone, about all you can do is hope you get them by fourth in a yard or two. They move the ball forward so effectively with the power of the running backs and the blocking of the line. Lewis Colbert into punt. Two punts so far today of 30 and 44 yards. The Ruth is deep for Alabama. Third time it appears that Alabama's going to try to block it. He gets it off, and it's a dandy. Ooh, that's a good kick. The Ruth all the way back to his 16. And down at the 20. 57-yard punt, and obviously that's the way the wind was swirling that time. Certainly Auburn needed a great punt. Coaches realized that the kicking game can flip the field over and establish field position for you, where Alabama is now handling the ball deep on their end field. U.S. Cuba, amateur boxing. Boy, that's always a good one. We have a little trouble with the Cubans in the non-Olympic years, but it's still a matter of growth for our young people, and we're beginning to assemble now some outstanding young amateur boxers. USA Cuba coming up right after the ball game. Keep those amateur boxing matches are really fun to watch. A lot of spirit, a lot of enthusiasm. Walter Lewis, the Alabama quarterback now, and time is called by Alabama with 11 minutes and 21 seconds to play in the first half. They have one timeout remaining as Lewis comes to the sideline. Paula Tuck, the Arctic Circle. The winters can be 10 months long and 50 below. So people stay home and watch a lot of TV. Maybe that's why the Takiak family chose the only TV to win an Emmy for its beautiful picture, the Sony Trinitron. But maybe the Takiaks chose a Sony because the nearest TV repair man is 250 miles away. Roger control. T minus five and counting. Three, two, one. We have ignition. We have liftoff control. Roger. Looking good. Looking 
looks like a beauty. Congratulations, everyone. Three million fans attended NCAA Division I AA football games in 1981. The Division I AA membership has grown to 92 teams for the 1982 season. The division championship will be determined December 18th at Wichita Falls, Texas. Lewis Colbert football games in 1981. The Division I AA membership has grown to 92 teams for the 1982 season. The division championship will be determined December 18th at Wichita Falls, Texas. Lewis Colbert nailed a 57-yarder. That equals his longest point of his career. So far at Auburn, right now, Alabama has got to go to work, and they've marked him down at their own 19. Walter Lewis back at his quarterback, and he's going to throw it. And he comes over the middle with it to Ben Gross. And Ben Gross is out to the 37 for a first down. Dennis Collier hit him hard, but Big Jesse just tucked it away. Hayden Fry at SMU is the first coach that used two wideouts in the wishbone attack. It spreads the defense. You see what happens when you get speed at those wide outs and Ben Gross number 88. Look how wide open he is across the middle. Lewis lays it right into the completion. Number 24 is in the Alabama backfield now. Mickey Ginyard. So Paul Bryant continuing to shuffle his players in. They move it from uh, near the 37. Lewis, the quarterback, keeps it, turns it inside. And he runs into the 43, Quincy Williams. A junior from Douglasville, Georgia. Makes the stop on him. With two, two split receivers and a full house backfield in the wishbone, I should make the point that you lose a little bit of your running strength right up the middle. You, you don't have that tight end to block you. As we look at the pass rush so far, Alabama is just really, really putting it on them. But Auburn had one big play, the recovered fumble in the air. Second down, four. Here the 43. Lewis back to throw. He's got Patrick to the left. He goes to Ben Dross. Jesse's open and got it. And first down, Alabama at the Auburn 26. Dennis Collier, free safety, having trouble staying with Ben Dross. Acres and acres of open field when you see a team have to has to stop the run and then cover the receiver. Watch Bendros. You don't see anybody in the picture. He is wide open until finally the safety man. Look how wide open he is. The safety man Cardia has to come from over the football and try to cover him an impossibility. Jesse comes limping off the field now. Lewis passing six out of ten, 102 yards. Bendros comes off the field limping. From the Auburn 26, first down Alabama. Lewis. And Lewis to the fullback inside Craig Turner. And Turner takes just over the 20. Greg Card, number 54, as we've already said previously, is an outstanding linebacker. He can run to the right and left as good linebackers, but when the play is up the middle, he's got to take on the player. The blocker many times, as he does right there, he gets under the shoulder pads. Good linebacker then comes off and makes the play. That's an outstanding defensive play. Pitch it wide to Patrick. Patrick is spun down behind the line of scrimmage and number 28, Bob Harris, the strong safety, penetrated to make the play. Bobby was playing almost a defensive end position once the play broke. Strong safeties can be a key personnel on your defense because they are a combination linebacker, in and cornerback. On that occasion, he just penetrated immediately. It wouldn't be blocked. The loss is back to the 22. Daryl White now comes in at a wideout position. For Alabama, Walter Lewis having a big first half. A total of over 100 yards, third down and seven. And they hand it inside, and there's nothing there for Patrick. Number 63 was the man that made the first contact with him playing middle guard, James Wallace, a six-footer, sophomore from Gadsden, Alabama. He weighs 260 pounds. Alabama gambled on the draw play on third and long. Auburn was ready for it, forcing attempted field goal. Peter Kim will try the field goal from 37 yards, and from that distance, he is four out of five in 1982. It's up, plenty of leg on it, and it's good. 
Eight minutes and 31 seconds to play in the first half. And Peter Kim gives Alabama the lead over Auburn, 10 to 7. We are USA One. Taking charge by unleashing a Chevrolet the competition can't touch. Camaro. Flat out selling every other 2 plus 2 sports coupe on the road today. And now Camaro is led by a new standard 5 speed 5 liter Z28. The hot selling Chevy Camaro. It still leaves everything but its shadow behind. USA One is taking charge. When a business grows, it often grows out of control. Simple procedures become gigantic problems. Things like billing, filing, and shipping become too big to handle the old way. Why not get one of IBM's low-cost small computers like Datamaster? It puts you back in control, and it can grow. Here's to a great future. As your business grows. Year after year, there is one amateur boxing rivalry like no other. The top two teams in the world, the U.S. and Cuba, next on ABC. The Goodyear Blimp America bringing you that picture as Terry Sanders has the ball on the tee for Alabama and will kick it off. He's going to go into the wind. Lionel James drifting across. Yard deep in the end zone is coming out. to break it to the sidelines and just could not get there. Stan Gay, the first man to hit him for Alabama. Jesse Bendross with ice on the knee. He came hoppling off the field, but the report is that Jesse will be able to play more. The ball is at the 18. As we look at Bendross's numbers for the season, you notice 21 yard average per reception, which is not unusual if you have a wishbone running attack to help you. Auburn's running attack has been virtually nil so far today. Alabama leading now 10 to 7. Campbell gives it inside. Two yards to Bo Jackson. I think we make it three. They're giving it 21. Keith, we should make the point that Jackson has never played fullback before. Auburn had an off week to practice this, but it's hard for a freshman to come in and play a new position in two weeks' time and perform against a team as good as Alabama. First it's time Auburn has shown the eye formation this season. And they were hoping to be able to pop Jackson out of the eye and get some yardage out of it. As Campbell going wide to Lionel James, he gets just not enough people out there to help him around the corner. Alabama's defensive flow is outstanding. Mike Pitts, the defensive end, strung it out and stood his ground. Well, Pitts weighs 255 pounds, stands six foot four, all southeastern conference. Really one of the finest defensive ends in the southeastern conference, if not America. As we look at the bear, and don't think he's not coaching and getting involved. He does. He may talk that he doesn't. He may give you that impression. He's still running the show. From the 23, third down, five for Auburn. Alabama now totaling 228 yards on offense. And Auburn, 67 prior to that play, which is good to the 29 and close to a first down with Bo Jackson carry. There's the uh, difference so far in this ball game offensively. Alabama's been able to throw the football. Auburn coaches told me as we watched for the measurement that they didn't think they could win the game if they didn't hit some passes. Key situations, they've been unsuccessful so far. He got it by the nose of the ball. Now, Auburn is lining up in two tight ends, eye formation, one split receiver, which is really a goal line attack. Not much threat of a big run there, a big play, unless James can pop it on his own natural ability. That's trying to get one wide receiver out of the ball game. We've got two tight ends, and he had Edwards and Woods both in the ball game of 12 players. <laughs> now get back to the legal limit. First down for Auburn. And blindsided. Campbell is hit by John Elias, the nose guard. And then making a flying effort 
to grab that ball was Russ Wood. And Russ couldn't quite get it. You're going to see Campbell throw the ball right to Wood to tight end. I mean, the defensive end, excuse me. Mike Woods right here is going to throw the ball out to James, but Woods comes in front and nearly intercepts it, which could have been a touchdown. Ball was thrown too hard for him to handle. 240-pounder climbing on your back, though, it doesn't help your accuracy much, does it? Right off of his blind side, quarterback's blind side. Second down and 10, just outside the 28. Ride it off to the inside. And carrying is Ron O'Neill. Ron O'Neill, 5'9", 245, but he can't produce much. He gets it up to the 30. So it'll be third down and about eight. What Alabama's doing on defense is electing to make Campbell keep the ball on the option play and not let him pitch. We'll have a report on last night's uh, Larry Holmes' successful uh, defense of his heavyweight title against Randy Cobb. One of the features today on ABC's Wide World of Sports will be Teo Stevenson and Tyrone Big, amateur heavyweights. Teo, of course, the three-time gold medalist from the Olympics. In the Cuba. They swing it over to Lionel James. Get him out there one-on-one, -on -one, and it doesn't do much good because Robbie Jones, number 97, a senior from Demopolis, Alabama, just looked him right in the eye and took him down. It'll be fourth down. Jones making the tackle. Auburn unable to get much going offensively so far in the ball game. It'll be the fourth punt of the day for Lewis Colbert. His last one was a beauty, 57 yards, and Paul Carruth is deep for Alabama. See the fullback calling the blocking assignments after he reads the alignment. Well, they got some pressure on him, but again, Colbert hits a good high-hanging punt, not as long as the other one, but it's a very effective punt, forcing the fair catch for Alabama back at the 27, a 44-yarder. You can see that Alabama is coming right through. They have one, he must be a three-step kicker, very slow. One, two, that's his second step. Third step, Alabama gets very close to this. You can see the... That's Rodriguez, Mike Rodriguez. Rodriguez. His hands, if he'd extended them, he might have been able to, to deflect the ball. So it's Alabama's ball. First down at their own 27. Tied leading the Tigers, 10-7. to 5-12 to play in the first half. And Walter Lewis fumbles the ball. It is picked up by the trailing back, Jeff Fagan. And a loss on the play back to about the 22. The comparison of quarterbacks in this ball game, and you see here Todd Blackledge yesterday threw 24 times, hit 10 uh, for a touchdown. And he has 22 for the season. As Penn State won the big ball game against Pitt. And Nebraska beat Oklahoma in another good one. Penn State going to the Sugar Bowl to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia scuffling this afternoon with Georgia Tech between the hedges and Athens. Other scores from yesterday's ball game there. The Raiders have told you they have a pretty good season. It is second down and 15. From the 22, pressure's on. Lewis is, throws a down trail out there, and it's picked off by Bob Harris. He was getting pressure from the blind side, and his arm must have been hit because that ball just came fluttering out there like an old lame-legged turkey. And Bob Harris stepped right in there and picked it off. The backside rush is what really worries the quarterback and the coaches. He cannot see it. You're going to see coming back there, who is that, uh, number 99? 99. Smith. And he gets his arm and watch the ball. It just flutters up like a wounded duck. And it comes right down into the hands of Harris from Decatur, Georgia, my old hometown. And that's Harris's fourth interception of the season. Number 28, Harris, the strong safety. You can see he reads the ball, goes up in front of the receiver, Bacon, and intercepts the pass. So it's a big chance for Auburn now from the Alabama 25. And Campbell goes with it, and he almost throws an interception. My goodness, he threw the ball right straight toward Jeremiah Castile. And Castile could not pull it down. The Auburn defense has set up the offense now. Remember, it was Tim Drinkard who picked that loose fumble out of the air and ran 62 yards. That set up the 14-yard play for the touchdown. Now here is uh, Bob Harris, who's made another big defensive play for the Titans. He go to your old high school? He went to my old high school, Decatur, Georgia. Never know out from Georgia, would you? <laughs> Second down and ten. And Campbell wants to throw again. Goes over the middle, has an arm. Edwards 
And Mike Edwards falls it down at the Alabama 11. First down for Auburn. Play action pass. Handcuffs the linebackers. Edwards is going to drift across the middle. The ball is thrown right in the numbers. The best place to throw it when you're going across that middle. Edwards has played halfback, fullback, tight end, wide receiver. Just a very versatile play. He's wide open. Hand linebackers cuffed with, handcuffed with the fake. They mark it inside the 10. So we're going to have to call it nine yards away. First and goal from the nine. It's actually about nine and a half. And Lionel James a hole. And James almost loses the ball as he is hit. But he has enough of a handle to take it down at the four. Jeremiah Castile, left side quarterback, hit him hard. That's a big pickup on first and goal. They got a little more than five yards on it. Good blocking by Jackson. The right half back, the freshman, and also the fullback, Neal, clearing the path. Alabama leading 10 to 7 with 3.15 to go in the first half. And Auburn trying to regain, uh, trying to take the lead for the first time. Second down and goal inside the five, handed off up the middle of the fullback, and he surges down to about the two. So it'll be third and goal from the Alabama two. They want a timeout to talk, it appears. And they take it. So you've got three minutes and one second to play in the first half. 10-7 Alabama lead, but Auburn is knocking on the door. New ideas have now come together that advance the state of the art in home heating, creating a new generation of high technology gas heating systems so efficient they can cut your fuel consumption by one third. They help make gas the fuel of the future an even better value today. Because the future belongs to the efficient. When it comes to three-wheelers, the choice is simple. Whether you're picking for work, or picking for play. Just pick the Honda ATC. Follow the leader, he's on a Honda. Last year, Arkansas ran hog wild over Texas, trampling their hopes for the national championship. Next Saturday, Texas wants revenge. A Southwest shootout on ABC. Clouds continue gray, kind of heavy, but no rain. Today. Now here comes Auburn on third down and two. Tommy Wilcox is on the field and has been out there in the Alabama secondary, in case you were curious about it. The All-American. They're going to go out of the wishbone and Campbell down the line, turns it, keeps it for the goal line, touchdown! right he was able to fall across the goal line and Auburn has taken the lead now going for the extra point Greco Mike Mann holds it now Del Greco hits it good two minutes 55 to go in the first half 14 10 Auburn number 74 watch number 74 the pulling guard he gets right in the way of Campbell number 74 as he turns up he actually blocks Campbell first right there. He nearly tackles him. Now Campbell twists and turns and gets across the goal line for the touchdown. Extra effort by Campbell resulting in a touchdown. All right now, let's check in with Jim Lampley and see what's going on in Athens. Keith, as you know, Herschel Walker needs 181 yards today to move past Archie Griffin and become the number three all-time rusher. He just got 59 of them. On this early first quarter touchdown run against Georgia Tech, it is the Bulldogs seven, the engineers nothing in Athens. Keith Jackson. 
Okay, Jimmy. Thanks very much. That means the Georgia Bulldogs getting out to the lead, trying to stay number one in the nation. We could have ourselves a party. New Year's night at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, couldn't we? With number one Georgia and Penn State National Championship ball game. Here's Del Greco's kickoff. And it's gone. It'll be Alabama's ball, first down at the 20. Well, it's the Auburn defense that has presented the opportunities for the Auburn offense. As we look at the numbers, that's what uh, Pat Dye, that's how he started the season. He felt his defense was good. His offense was just young and inexperienced and good kicking game. Let the defense get the field position for you, and that's what's happening. Ken Coley, the Alabama quarterback for this series now. First down, Alabama at the 20. Auburn leading 14 to 10. And the ball is given to the fullback and Ricky Moore. He is up to about the 23. Alabama has lost 22 fumbles and had 10 passes intercepted. 32 over three a ball game, and that's far more than Bear Bryant's teams usually uh, give it away. Jesse Bendross is back in, having had some ice on his knee. Larry Brown comes to the bottom of the picture as a wide man for the Tide. On second down, seven. Holy rides it, rolls it out, keeps it, and turns it upfield, and takes a whack. Christopher Martin, weak side linebacker, brought him down. But even when Coley, as quick as he is, when you get a good hit on Coley, he still has the faculty for spinning his way upfield and getting some yardage out of it. That's, a, that's the mark of a good wishbone quarterback. Sort of walk through the yards when he cuts up make people miss him, override him, but be sure and fall forward, helping that yardage be short for third down. Third down and two, Coley's carried three times, 22 yards. So it's third and short. Auburn with a five-man front, and Coley's got it, and he's got the first down as he hits it out to the 32. Should make note that Auburn has changed drastically their defense in the last uh, two possessions they're playing three, double covering both receivers and having a free safety to help out radical change that, that particular defense would require Alabama to mostly run the football they're vulnerable running not passing with double coverage and three deep uh, secondary first and ten Alabama's 32 Oh, fullback knocked it over the right side that time, found some daylight, and big Ricky Moore moves that ball for just about seven yards. But Keith, Alabama cannot keep running the football. It's only we're coming on 120 seconds left as we see uh, the clock. They have got to start throwing the ball. Cooley is not the best passer, and yet he's still in the ball game. A little bit of a surprise to me. Jones comes out now. Moore with seven carries in the game for 48 yards. Ben Dross and Brown are the wide people. Only keeps it and gets it up to the 42. Now you've got about 45 seconds to go in the first half. Alabama has only one timeout remaining in the first half. They're looking to see whether or not he's got his first down. If he got it out close to the 42. Keith, you would think that uh, Bear would want Lewis in the ball game. He's been, he's had a hot hand passing. Bendros and Jones have not been covered. I don't think any time in the first half they have had some drop passes, but seldom has all been uh, been effective with their pass defense. There's still plenty of time to score or at least get a field goal. Looks like it's just short. Just short. That certainly hurts uh, Alabama's chances of scoring because they've got to waste time on the clock to, to make the first down when they should be throwing the ball. Third down and a half foot. They're up there as soon as the clock starts. They're ready to snap it. Coley follows the center, Mott, and appears to have the first down. Mott came off that snap pretty quick. He's good center. 
the second team all southeastern conference and, and the center is the key and the wishbone to establish the fullback block uh, the play he has to block that nose guard single-handedly on most plays if he's good at it you can make yardage up the middle lewis had a pretty good first half but he's on the bench now coley clock running at 35 seconds as the quarterback and coley double wide gonna throw he's got jones over the sidelines and throws it short Ole is not known for a passer so far this year he's four completions out of seven attempts where Lewis the great pass his best passer had attempted 134 passes 63 percent of his passes Cool is none Coley. for two Coley is none for two where Lewis has completed 63 percent of his passes coming into this ball game Got his reasons, but uh, gave him this escape me. Let him, he's going to let him play. Auburn leading 14 to 10. 25 seconds to go, and Coley back to throw on second and 10. Again, goes that same pattern a moment ago, except this time it's Daryl White in at the split end position, and the senior out of Tuscaloosa makes the grab. And it's a first down for Alabama at the Auburn 39. Alabama with one foul out remaining, and 19 seconds to go in the first half. On this particular pattern, King number 27 is giving him plenty of room as the clock is winding down. If they're going to complete it, complete it in front of the defensive quarterback. Alabama has uh, spent its last time out. So while uh, we're waiting for play to resume, let's take a look at the Auburn campus. And we have solid motor ignition and liftoff. Auburn University is proud of Hank Hartsfield and T.K. Mattingly, two Auburn alumni who piloted the space shuttle Columbia flawlessly through her fourth mission. Outstanding. Auburn was a friendly school. The students were down to earth, at least the ones I associated with, loved to have fun and also worked hard. I, I had a good time when I was in school. I suspect it would probably be good for other folks. I, I would like to see my kids go there. In the land-grant tradition of research, instruction, and public service, Auburn University is reaching into the future. 19 seconds to play in the first half. Alabama owns the football first down at the Auburn 39 with the running quarterback Ken Coley in the ball game. And he just completed a pass to Darrell White for the first down. 14-10 Auburn lead. Ross is wide to the top of the picture. Coley almost falls down coming off the snap. He's in some pressure now, and he's got to run it. And he hits the chalk back up around the 40, just outside the 40. Well, he's out of bounds, and he's going to lose about a yard and a half or two. The man that was making life miserable for him is big 99, Doug Smith, and 98, Gerald Williams. A pair of defensive tackles, Williams being a freshman. Glory be, Frank. You ever see some mini big freshmen? 6'4, 269. <laughs> that one. That's your halftime coming up. Very interesting report relative to black coaches in college football. Walter Lewis now is in at quarterback. 12 seconds to play in the first half. Second down and 12. Lewis straight back. He's very quick. Oh, he's got Ben Dross in the end zone wide open. He hits right on the sidelines and gets a first down. He didn't see Ben Dross. Ben Dross was all by himself hollering, Woo, look at me. And he never saw it. Here's Ben Dross. You can see he's going to cross and go out to the right. And when, when Lewis scrambles to the left with his quickness, number 47, King runs all the way across the field. Number 27, I don't know why he did this. Look how wide open he is for a touchdown, but he couldn't get the ball back to him or he didn't see it. As White he... was shaken up on his catch. Darrell White getting the first down for Alabama at the Auburn 15. White's just going to get over close to the boundary. If he catches the ball, he wants to get out of bounds. Stop the clock as quick as you can. Get out of bounds. Now Alabama has a field goal opportunity. White coming off the field and a 33 yard kick coming up by Peter Kim with two ticks remaining on the clock in the first half. The holder is quarterback Paul Field. Snap is good, hold is good, kick by Kim is good. And so 
but time runs out in the first half as Alabama gets a 33 yard field goal the second by Ken today but Auburn leads at halftime by 14 to 13. Now here is Ann Simon with coach Pat Dye. Thanks Keith. Coach historically both teams have run under the wishbone yet today you elected to go with the I formation. How come. Well we 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 really uh, wanted to be able to get uh, Jackson and James in the in the into our option game at the same time but uh, it, it, nothing we've done has worked very good. We've been lucky to defense has given us two two breaks and we've gotten two touchdowns out of it but outside of that our offense has been been very poor. And defensively, we haven't really stopped them. They've had a long way to go. Our kicking game has, has kind of kept them backed up a little bit, and then they've stopped themselves some. But we've got to play much better the second half to have a chance to win the football game. Of course, this game is extremely important for recruiting purposes. I know that your idea must be to build this team from the ground up. Well, you know, I, I don't know how important it is for recruiting. I think if, if uh, you know, if we were had been at Auburn for 10 years and were getting beat every year, I think it would would this game would would uh, mean a great deal as far as recruiting is concerned but I doubt very many if if very many youngsters are going to decide whether they come in to Auburn or going to Alabama based on the results of today's game. It's no secret by now that it's not been since 1970 that an assistant coach a former assistant coach of Bear Bryant has beaten him. Scary. Well little. you know I tell you what uh, in, the, in the time that he's been at Alabama it hadn't been the time that anybody has beaten him very often. And uh, just it's just happened that uh, you know we've been involved in playing them a little too. All right, Coach. Thank thanks you. very much. Now back upstairs to Keith Jackson. Our halftime score: Auburn 14, Alabama 13. Back with the halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and the word from our local station. Sunday, see the bizarre Empire of the Dead, the drive-in funeral parlor, and meet the world's tallest man and woman on Ripley's Believe It or Not. Then. Do you have the ransom? Matt Houston puts his life on the line to rescue a kidnapped crown prince. Then Redford and Fonda. Lady, I don't want to tank with you. A network television premiere, The Electric Horseman, Sunday, here on ABC. Ben Halverson, Little League coach and auto owner's insurance agent. He likes to say that the kids on his team are the best reasons for the life insurance he recommends because Ben cares about his customers and their kids. That's why he designs each life policy to the needs of each customer. I'm Ben Halverson. There's an auto owner's agent just like me in your town. The Phillips Agency is your professional insurance agent in Alex City. Call us at 329-8406. In Montgomery, the Harold Faulkner Agency can provide you with any insurance service you might need. Most automobile owners aren't in the habit of placing a glass of water on their engine hoods to test the smoothness of the engine. However, the automotive professionals at Wright's Bumper to Bumper believe that a car that is properly maintained and serviced regularly should support a glass of water on the hood without spilling a single drop. Quality car care doesn't just happen. It begins with professional service and quality auto parts. Wright's Bumper to Bumper challenges you to quality automobile service. Doesn't your car deserve it? Right bumper to bumper, 1129 Adams Avenue, Montgomery. WKAB, Montgomery. At the University of Alabama, we have enjoyed the glories and many benefits of a number one football team. We are now committed to a much bolder mission, to develop a major comprehensive research university. Here in Tuscaloosa, we're focusing on ways the university can directly affect the quality of life and economic development of our state and nation. At the University of Alabama, we want to be as successful at this as we are at this. Jack Whitaker in our New York studios. From Grenoble, France comes word that John McEnroe and Peter Fleming defeated the French in doubles, and the United States has won the 1982 Davis Cup. Traditional rivalries are part of the NCAA college football season at this time of year. And yesterday, two games which certainly qualify under this heading took place. Pittsburgh against Penn State, Oklahoma against Nebraska. And they are part of our Fireman's Fund flashback. Today's Fireman's Fund flashback is brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent or broker near you. First to that Nebraska-Oklahoma game. Here we are in the second period. Number 34, Doug Wilkering of Nebraska goes 14 yards for a TD to make it 21 to 10, Nebraska. But then in the third period, the freshman phenomenon from Mississippi, 
Marcus Dupre rips it out for 86 yards for a touchdown to close it up. Nebraska 21, Oklahoma 17. The teams then traded touchdowns to make it 28-24, and with 36 seconds left, Oklahoma quarterback Kelly Phelps is intercepted by Nebraska's Scott Strasburger to seal the victory and to give Nebraska the Big 8 championship. At University Park, Pennsylvania, Pitt and Penn State met yesterday for the 82nd time. Here is Pittsburgh with number 44, Brian Thomas, three yards for a touchdown to make the score pick seven, Penn State three in the second period. But the Nittany Lions came back in the second half. Here's Todd Blackledge to Kenny Jackson, 31 yards for a touchdown to make it Penn State 10, Pitt seven. State went on to win it 19-10 to give Joe Paterno his 14th win against Pittsburgh in 17 tries. Just to remind you that the score of the game you're watching is Auburn 14, Alabama 13. We'll return with Jim Lampley and a report on black coaches in college football in just a moment. You know, for business insurance, Fireman's Fund fits most everyone, large or small. For example, it helps cover a business as huge as Ralston Purina or as small as Beckman Turf and Irrigation, Anheuser-Busch or Fantasy's Restaurant, even the Chicago Cubs. So for your business insurance, ask your independent agent about Fireman's Fund. Large or small, this hat is just your size. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. America's colleges, outstanding resources, improving the quality of life, providing diversified career opportunities. Veterinary medicine is contributing to higher education's role in serving society. The University of Missouri features one of the nation's finest programs. I believe that one of the biggest challenges is just uh, making diagnoses in animals because when you compare that to human medicine, an animal can't tell you where it hurts. You've got to know. I think not only does a person have to have a general an interest in animals, but they really have to enjoy working with people because it's the people that, that have to speak for their animals. I would advise anyone considering the veterinary profession to spend some time with veterinarians and this could be in various areas of veterinary medicine. Uh, of course, practice is the, uh, the one that we think of most often, but uh, the young person, I think, that's really interested in, in this field should uh, spend some time with veterinarians wherever they can find them, wherever they can get that experience. The challenge in veterinary medicine, in my perspective, is the likeness between treating small children and in treating animals. They're just as helpless and in need of, of assistance and as unable to communicate their problems as, as a small child. America's energy is mind power. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. Jim Lampley again in New York. I needn't tell you this is a light day in college football, but there are some things worth reporting. First, number one ranked Georgia leads Georgia Tech 7-0 in the first quarter. In case you didn't see it earlier, this is the touchdown, a 59-yard run. Vintage Herschel Walker. Walker needs 181 yards today, become the all-time number three rusher. He's well on his way toward that mark. Later, Georgia Tech threatens getting inside the Georgia 10, but Anthony Flack. One of the Bulldogs nation's leading pass interceptor unit picked one off from Jim Bob Taylor and it's 7-0 Bulldogs. Couple of games tonight which are worth mentioning. Sixth ranked Arizona State plays Arizona in Tucson. If the Sun Devils win, they go to the Rose Bowl. Seventh ranked LSU closes out its season tonight at home against Tulane and of course LSU is already in the Orange Bowl. Tenth ranked Clemson, which will not be going to any bowl this year, plays in Tokyo against Wake Forest in the game they call the Mirage Bowl. A few games that are just getting underway. Cincinnati is at Miami and that game is just starting. Tennessee is at Vanderbilt and that game is just starting very shortly. Division I AA playoffs. Boston University playing Colgate for the second consecutive week. Colgate leads 15 to 7 at halftime. South Carolina State and Furman will be getting underway. Well, they've just gotten underway and it's nothing, nothing. Jackson State and Eastern Illinois also playing a Division I AA playoff game today. The rise of the black athlete has been the single most dramatic development, the biggest change in big-time intercollegiate athletics over the period of the last 25 years. You can visit major colleges all over the country now. It is not at all unusual to find more than half of the male scholarship athletes in the ticket-selling sports of football and basketball are black. 
But though this is no recent development, it has not been accompanied by a similar rise in the number of black coaches and administrators in sport. In fact, in those areas, progress has been painfully slow. When you walk in for an interview as a black person, for a football job at a major white institution, you're going to lose. But that's not true in big-time college basketball, where the color line was broken eight years ago by George Raveling at Washington State. Now there are several, including Nolan Richardson at Tulsa, Willis Reed at Creighton, John Thompson at Georgetown, Larry Farmer at UCLA. Black men run some of the most successful, glamorous programs in the country. Compare that with football. Over the past decade, more than 200 major head coaching jobs. Yet for six years, no blacks were hired. Two have made it since then, both at badly downtrodden programs. It was 1979, fully 15 years after black players had finally begun taking their places in the last few lily-white pockets of major college football, that the coaching color line was finally broken here at Wichita State University. They asked me questions about whether or not my family could sit in the stands and hear racial slurs and, and what would they do about it. They asked us if we could accept this. They all also asked me about going into homes and recruiting uh, wherein we have to recruit uh, black athletes, we have to recruit white athletes, we have to do all of this. Jeffries has done the job at Wichita State, eight wins and three losses this year, but his success may not open doors for other blacks because to get hired, they must satisfy so many white people. The athletic director, the committee, the search committee, the president of the university, the alumni, uh, the alumni committees, the boosters club, the people that have uh, been with the university through their ups and downs. These are the people that have to be considered uh, when a coach is hired, no matter whether he's black or white, at a major university. At Northwestern, Dennis Green impressed enough people to become the second head coach at a major predominantly white school. He, too, is turning around a losing program. But Green sees a different obstacle for blacks. The thing I think that really makes it tough uh, is that there are so many good candidates for jobs. Uh, an example, uh, I applied for the San Jose State job. They contacted me. I didn't apply. They contacted me about the job. I interviewed for the job. Uh, the choice went to Jack Elway, and who is a tremendous football coach, one of the best in the country. Uh, two years ago, uh, I was contacted by Stanford uh, and interviewed for that job. and had a fantastic interview. But the job went to Paul Wiggin, who is a fantastic coach and alumni of, of, uh, of Stanford. So I think more, it was not so much of my inadequacies or my lack of preparation for those head jobs as the fact that I was beat out by some outstanding candidates who have proven that they can also do a good job. But for black coaches, a good job is not always good enough. A man named John Jackson once ran the dynamic Southern Cal offense. His former boss says he's out of coaching because he wasn't offered the head coaching job he deserved. I don't think there's any question. I, we talked about it. I, I, I think his options are that he would have been forced into pro football or forced in, into situations that, that just didn't give him a fair shake to reach his full potential. It's just no question. The question really is, uh, do the people in the decision-making positions have the guts or have the... Uh, or want to make the decision to hire a black coach when, obviously, when there's a coaching position open, there are numerous candidates, all of which uh, are qualified as such. In all our discussions of black head coaching candidates, one name is mentioned more than others. Rudy Hubbard, for the past nine years, head coach at predominantly black Florida A&M. Hubbard has been interviewed four times for major jobs. First, at Washington State, where he felt he had a positive relationship with then-athletic director Ray Nagel. He came to my hotel room and felt that I had had uh, a super interview uh, and then I came back to Tallahassee and then he called me and actually told me that he thought I'd had the best interview uh, but felt that it, at that time they couldn't hire me and uh, of course the situation was that uh, George Raveling was the head basketball coach and he is black and they felt that the, you know I, I, I guess the under the behind the scene uh, feeling, I guess, was that they didn't need two black coaches out of a prominent white institution at that time. Later, Hubbard interviewed at Ohio State, where he played and then coached under Woody Hayes. But there would be no return to his alma mater. I don't intend to be vindictive or vicious when I say this. All I'm stating is my personal feeling. And I think that being black, 
I couldn't have been hired if I had had the best interview at Ohio State University. And I don't think at this time that they, you know, are ready for that. Former college, now pro coach Bill Walsh suggests that more black coaches will be ready only after more of them master the public elements of head coaching. And uh, the break, breakthrough for, I think, for black people is to get as much public speaking, as much open exchange with people, to become as well acquainted with people, uh, not to be a bit hesitant to assert themselves uh, in their profession so that they gain confidence in themselves and dealing in the head coaching image of uh, public speaking, of, of openly uh, meeting and uh, dealing with uh, people from all facets of life. But John Merritt of Tennessee State, a coaching legend in predominantly black football circles, says the black assistant coach at a white school doesn't get the training Walsh prescribes. We feel he's a token. He's there to satisfy the black players, that they are liberal, that they are interested in having a black on the staff, and, uh, and to satisfy the liberal constituents. Uh, we don't feel that it is a wholehearted uh, attempt to get black coaches because very few of them have responsibilities. Uh, very few of them are coordinators. Well, I think the problem with getting black coaches involved in coaching is that so many of them are gifted athletes when they leave college. They go into professional football, make big money, and then they never want to really come back and, and make the sacrifices necessary to ser serve the apprenticeship. There are not that many really qualified black assistant coaches uh, who have had experience. You know, when you look for a coach, you, 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 you weigh all uh, factors, and you'd, uh, you know, you'd, lo you'd love to get more and more black coaches because you've got so many of your players who are black kids who would, would like some people to identify with. Meanwhile, thousands of black high school athletes are preparing to play football at major schools. For their white counterparts, success on the playing field can lead to opportunities in coaching. But for these players, that's an avenue not yet opened up. And it probably won't, as long as the presence of black faces in big-time college athletics is more a matter of exploitation than of true integration. NCAA College Football. Auburn versus Alabama is brought to you by Goodyear for more good years in your car. By Budweiser for all you do, this Bud's for you. By Honda Motorcycles, Honda, follow the leader. And by Trinitron, the Emmy Award winning color television from Sony, the one and only. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours a happy and safe holiday season. In the race to offers automation, some will wait for tomorrow. But for those who choose Wang, today it'll be business in the fast lane. Because Wang has the computer technology and worldwide resources to automate your entire office now. The choice is yours. Ignore the inevitable or race boldly into the future with Wang, the office automation computer company. Who is America's leader in radials? Goodyear. We outsell all foreign radials combined. One reason? The Goodyear Wrangler, a light truck radial that's all season, all terrain, all position. Wrangler gives you outstanding traction so you can take it just about anywhere. The Goodyear All-Season Wrangler. It's one reason Goodyear is the leader in radials. No foreign maker of radials even comes close. When you need radials, come up to Goodyear. How are you? How do you? Hey. There's a special place where a dad can look back and a kid right. can look ahead okay. together with lots to see, lots to do, lots to share. And all with the same college spirit that's been running through America's veins since the pigskin first floated across a crisp October Saturday. It's the College Football Hall of Fame in Kings Island, Ohio. 
And it's something special you won't want to pass up. We're at halftime at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Auburn leading Alabama 14 to 13. Here is Ann Simon with Coach Paul Bryant. Of course, uh, this man needs no introduction. Coach Paul Bear Bryant, both Keith Jackson and Frank Royals were wondering during the broadcast why you elected to go with Ken Coley at quarterback instead of Walter Lewis. Trying to win the game. Uh, Everything I do, I'm trying to win the game. No reason for it, just for that. Well, I'm trying to win the game. I apologize for who I play. I'm trying to win the game. What about the turnover situation? There was a there was a turnover two there. Turnover that really causes two touchdowns. And what do you elect to do in, in the second half that you may what? change that? You're having problems with turnovers all year long. Well, we sure have, and we're gonna try to not turn over this time. We're gonna try to receive the football, tell you for touchdown. All right, coach, thank you. Of course, of course. Paul Bear Bryant is a man of very few words, but when you're in his shoes, we're, our actions speak louder than words, I think. Keith? All right, we'll see what happens in this second half of play with Auburn uh, leading by a score of 14 to 13. And uh, let's take a look now at some of the highlights out of the first half as Walter Lewis goes over the middle, 22 yards to Joey Jones for the touchdown. A marvelous catch and presence by Jones as he just touches the left foot down for the score. All he needs is one, and he got it down right there. Now it is the Auburn defense that has provided the opportunity for the Tigers. The fumble recovery, it pops up in the air here. Ball is pitched out to Joe Carter. Now Carter gets hit, ball pops out. Tim Drinkard will pick it up and run 62 yards with it. He almost scored, Frank would have if Walter Lewis hadn't run him down. I was wondering who made the tackle but it was uh, Darmany, the safety man, who's been an outstanding player. He popped the ball out and drinking them at 18, picks it up, and Lewis shows his speed, the quarterback of Alabama, as he catches Drinkard and knocks him out of bounds after 62-yard return. Now, from the 14, third down and 10 for Auburn, Lionel James, one of the smallest running backs on either ball club, fields it around the right side. The Auburn offensive front does a great job of blocking, and little Lionel takes it in. A freshman, Stokes, starting his first ball game at left guard, pulled around and made the key block. And then Auburn's second touchdown came on a two-yard run by Randy Campbell after Bob Harris had intercepted on the Alabama 25. We start the second half, a bouncing kickoff to Paul Carruth. Carruth looking for the sidelines, gets out there and turns it upfield for a good game. As Alabama will start first down at its 33. That was a 30-yard return by Carruth. Alabama opens, we presume, with Lewis, Fagan, Carruth, Moore, Jones. So Coach Brown has played a lot of people in that first half. The offensive front will be Ben Gross, Vickers, Bramblett, Mott, Adcock, Kayavec. And it is Walter Lewis at quarterback, with Ben Gross coming to the bottom of the picture. Lewis, 7 out of 12 for 128 yards and a touchdown. He's run seven times and picked up 19 yards on the ground. And Lewis coming to the open side of the field. Comes it. He had something on the pass. Rolling to his left. He can drill it. And he nails Vendross on the numbers for the first down up at the 46. Remember that Alabama's quarterback is just as good a runner as he is passer. That really forces the cornerback to come up, opening up the crease right to Jones, and he puts the ball right on the numbers. And a first down for the Tide at their own 46, just starting the second half of play. Auburn 14, Alabama 13. Auburn throwing a four-man front. Three linebackers are in tight. They're going to reverse it, give that ball, back it goes. And it's a delayed version of the old flea flicker. Now that turns into a screen. And carrying the ball, Ricky Moore. And we've got an Auburn man hurt on the play. An Auburn man is down on the field. Scott Riley, a defensive end, 204-pounder from Birmingham. Ben Thomas, big tackle for Auburn, 267. Dow Aukman, the middle guard, 263. Doug Smith, right tackle, 265. And Quincy Williams, the end, 218. Linebackers, Greg Carr, sophomore at 213. And Christopher Martin, 232 pounds. Auburn man leaving the field is number 28, Bob Harris. Harris was coming after Walter Lewis on a, a slow 
down version of the old flea flicker play. It started out as a big wide reverse and then back to Lewis and then eventually turned into something of a screen play for the fullback, Ricky Moore. And it was good for two yards. Lewis straight back on second down and eight. Loops it out here to Moore again. He, the man in front missed his block, and Moore outruns the pursuit and goes for another Alabama first down. So they're getting the Auburn defense spread out, Frank, and they're making it work. Here are the stats for the first half. Alabama dominating in every category except the two turnovers that were very costly. When you're in Auburn's position, your coach has to try to analyze what's wrong with our offense. Is it the fact that we're calling the wrong plays or getting whipped? To me, they were just getting whipped in the offensive line by the Alabama defense. That's major problems. Ball just short of the Auburn 41. First down for the tie. Alabama trying to get it going early here. Give that ball to Turner. And Greg Turner. Veers off to the right side, turns it back up field, moves it to the 36 of Auburn. Doug Smith brought him down. He's a big junior from Bayburg, Bayboro, North Carolina. Today's attendance, Keith Legion Field, 76,300. Wall to wall sellout. Why wouldn't it be? Split right down the middle, half to Auburn, half to Alabama in the tickets. Second down and five tied. Lewis, he's got Mendross over there at a first down. And Jesse is dragged down by David King, number 27 for Auburn. That'll advance the ball to the Auburn 25. And a first down. It's a checkoff play, Keith. You can see that Mendross was singly covered, no one around him. The defensive back, King, was off of him a good 10 yards, giving him plenty of time to catch the ball. And actually, King makes a great play to stop him from advancing after the catch. Bob Harris, who was shaken up, walked off the field. Apparently, no serious injury, just shaken up. Lewis is four for four in this possession for Alabama. Gives that ball off to the fullback Moore, and Ricky Moore is inside the 20. Bounced down at the 18. So the Alabama offense looks pretty determined to start this second half. What the what Alabama is doing is really giving uh, Auburn defense adjustment problems with the two split ends. They're trying to cover the passes, then they're trying to defend the run, and uh, Alabama quarterback Lewis is just changing the play at the line to hit the weakness. Give more seven on the carry, second down, three. There goes the big guy up the middle again. He's inside the 10. He's down to the eight. Christopher Martin brought him down, and it's first and goal to go, Alabama. Excellent block on the left side. You can see that the nose man, the center, Mott, picks up the off linebacker. The nose man was over him, but he just reaches out and picks up the linebacker who was keying on the fullback and he couldn't make the tackle. Ricky Moore now nine carries and 65 yards. <laughs> Lewis, outside the roof. Touchdown. play and in elects to take the quarterback for Ruth 16 good block from Jones as I said earlier here's Jones the block watch Jones he's not very big but he has to block on the goal line the quarterback out he makes the contact and line for Ruth to go in for the touchdown eight plays and 66 yards Alabama's going for two Lewis throws it over the middle he was under pressure, tried to hit Paul Carruth over the middle. Paul coming back to the ball, but he seemed to lose his balance a little bit and couldn't come back quite far enough. And as he fell, the ball came loose. So the five for two failed. 12 22 third quarter, Alabama 19, Auburn 14. 
Nikon introduces a new 35 millimeter camera so revolutionary 55,000 were sold before they were even built. It uses optics so superior they flew aboard Columbia. It operates automatically, semi-automatically, or manually. It measures light a completely new way for better flash pictures. It's so incredible it can even wake you up in the morning. Introducing the programmed Nikon FG, the ultimate 35 millimeter camera. There's a hungry kind of feeling, and every day it grows. You know there's so much more to you than anybody knows. Specialist Kevin Crowley is working with tomorrow's technology in the Army's newest tank. Be all that you can be. The laser determines target range and feeds it to the computer. Be all that you can be. It's just incredible. Because we need you in the Army. Olympic great Teofilo Stevenson and world champion Tyrell Biggs battle. Bikers attack the grueling course at Carlsbad. Plus, Elaine Zayak and Scott Hamilton dazzle today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. They're playing the Iron Bowl of 82 between Auburn and Alabama at Legion Field in Birmingham. Good year, North America. Give you that picture as we look on down to the stadium, and Alabama's going to kick it off after regaining the lead from Auburn. Took the opening kickoff in the second half and just stuck it in the end zone. Good, quick, crisp march by Alabama. Alvin cannot return that kick as it goes on through the end zone. And they'll start out at their 20. For Alabama defensively, it's Russ Wood, 218 pound end. Randy Edwards weighs in a 255 tackle. Mike Rodriguez, 250 nose guard. Jackie Klein, 274. And Mike Pitts, the other defensive end, 255. The linebacker, Steve Booker, 212, and Eddie Lowe at 190. And here's Auburn now. Let's see if Auburn decides to get the ball in the air a little more off first or second down. Yep, they give that ball up the middle to Bo Jackson, and Jackson breaks it pretty well. Runs it over the left side behind Reeves and Jordan and Wallace. And he is very close to a first down. The offensive unit for Auburn, Campbell, the quarterback, James Jackson, the running backs, with Juan O'Neill, the fullback, and Mike Edwards, the split end, just short of the 30. Second down. Be a pretty good time here, perhaps, to put it up. They've got Chris Woods coming wide to the right side. Big guys who are up front are the same that started the game. They're going to stay on the ground. Give it to Lionel James. And he high steps over the left side for a first down out at the 39. Auburn has made some changes and gone back to the I formation so that they can get the ball wide to, to James, number six, who is the great threat. Broken field runner makes a nice cut back inside for a big gain in the first down. In the I formation, two tight ends. Ball is just short of the 40, where it's first down for the white shirted Auburn Tigers. Campbell pulled it out of the fullback's belly and gives it outside to Lionel James. And a great job by Jeremiah Castile. Castile just would not yield on it. And the left cornerback for Alabama just kept dragging it out there. And finally, Tommy Wilcox and Eddie Lowe arrived and they stop him. Coming up next Saturday on ABC's presentation of college football, we'll have Arkansas and Texas. The Sanglier against the Longhorns. <laughs> Are you going to have to explain that, Keith? <laughs> the race of wild boars from Arkansas. Give him a yard on the carry. Second down and nine. Just over the 40. Campbell falls down coming off the snap. Got his legs tangled up. Big 96, Randy Edwards. Made very quick penetration. And in the collision, looked like uh, either Edwards had him by the foot or else he just got tangled up. Now we have third and long for Auburn. Remember, Auburn is basically a wishbone offense, not a good passing team on long yardage, primarily throwing on first down or running situations during the season. There we see the first down comparison. Auburn offense has been relatively inept in the face of the Alabama defense so far. They go wide to Lionel James. He's trying to get around the corner, but once again, the red shirts are all over the place. Stan Gay, number 28, and Steve Booker, number 49. 
And so Auburn's going to have to kick it away on fourth down. And Lewis Colbert will be in to punt for the fifth time in a ball game. His first one was rather weak at 30, but since then he's gone 44, 57, and 44. He's kicking into the wind as he did in the first quarter. And Alabama's got a 10-man front up there. They've tried to block each of the kicks so far. Fullback calling the blocking. Look at the fullback moving around trying to call the blocking. He gets it out of there. And Carruth lets it bounce. And then hangs his head. He should have run that thing down and kicked it out of bounds anything because he was up around the 20-25. But now after the roll, it rolls dead back on the Alabama six. And Louis Colbert gets a 55-yard punt out of it. 9.46 to go in the third quarter and the tide leading by five. 57 and 44. He's kicking into the wind as he did in the first quarter. And Alabama's got a 10-man front up there. They've tried to block each of the kicks so far. Fullback calling the blocking. Look at the fullback moving around trying to call the blocking. He gets it out of there. And Carruth lets it bounce. And then hangs his head. He should have run that thing down. And kicked it out of bounds anything because he was up around the 2025. But now after the roll, it rolls dead back on the Alabama six. And Louis Colbert gets a 55-yard punt out of it. 946 to go in the third quarter, and the tide leading by five. We are USA One. Taking charge with the new Cavaliers, with a new high-compression electronic fuel-injected two-liter engine, available five-speed transmission, and a new lower price. It's powered by Chevrolet's determination to put Cavalier on top, and price to keep it there. A full line of new Cavaliers from America's sales leader, USA One, is taking charge. You know, 28 years ago, I was the first military pilot to fly the 104 Starfighter. General Chuck Yeager, the test pilot who broke the sound barrier. I didn't take unnecessary chances then, and I don't take them now. That's why on my car, I go with high-technology AC Delco parts. This AC oil filter is engineered to protect gasoline engines for up to 15,000 miles. Never wait for trouble. Put high-technology AC Delco parts in your car or truck. AC Delco is the way to go. The American Football Coaches Association endorses ethical recruiting standards and supports the student-athlete's search for academic and athletic excellence. Join the AFC's efforts to support and practice ethical conduct and recruitment of student-athletes. Now Alabama's backed up at their six. They play on the rug, artificial surface here at Legion Field, and when the ball hits the ground, it tends to bounce. 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 Don't be surprised if Alabama throws in this situation. Well, they go to the fullback on the first play, and Ricky Moore is across the 10, out too close to the 12. Mark Dormany coming up out of the secondary to make the stop on him. So the big guy gets six yards on the first carry. Joe Carter comes on the field now for Alabama to go in the backfield. He replaces uh, Jeff Fagan at the halfback spot. Ben Gross and Jones with a wideout. Lewis rolls it. Throws for Jones. Joey's got it. Gets in the open. Oh, my goodness. And before he can really get his motor running, Greg Carr catches him from behind, but it's a first down and a big play. I don't know when I've seen a more effective combination of Lewis rolling out and Jones getting open and uh, Lewis getting the ball there with perfect timing. Timing, Great throw and outstanding catch. Watch Jones make the defense think deep. Boom, push him deep right there. Now that gets him open. The ball is right there. Missed tackle by King. Finally, Carr pulls him down. And first down Alabama at the 39. Now they've got some daylight behind them. Leading by five, 19 to 14. They tried the middle again with a fullback more. And the white shirts bury him at the line of scrimmage. And we check in with Jim Lampley in New York. 
Here in New York, we're keeping a close watch on the game in Athens, where Georgia Tech is keeping a tight leash on Georgia. Despite three turnovers, the engineers trail only 7-0. Georgia has turned the ball over only once. Walker, nine carries for 80 yards. We'll stay abreast of it as the game goes on. Now back to Keith Jackson. All right, Jimmy. I didn't, didn't think Georgia was going to run Tech out of town. Tech, Tech is close, pretty strong. They've been getting stronger as the season went along. Second down and nine, Alabama from their own 40. Lewis straight back. Swings it out to Moore and that fullback screen. And big guy has good balance. He is caught in by Christopher Martin and hit. But after being hit, Moore rumbles right along for three more yards. He's just short of the first down. Alabama offense has been effective when they could hold on to the football all season long. And talking to Mal Moore, the offensive coordinator, he told me that, that we've just self-destructed. In the ball games we lost, we just couldn't move the ball except LSU. And the LSU line whipped them, Keith, up front. First time in a long, long time that that's happened. Third down, a yard and a half. Lewis follows the fullback. I'll tell you, Walter took a pretty good crack from Christopher Martin once he got past the line of scrimmage and he was whacked back. Jeff Jackson got a piece of him too, but he's close to his first down. That kind of a play, it happened so bang bang, you, the linesman really had to jump in the middle of him to get the proper mark. And now Lewis hobbles off the field. Walter getting up slowly and comes to the sideline. He's going to stay. When we look at Alabama, they've averaged close to six yards on first down during the ball game, where Auburn has only averaged two yards on first down. Big difference. Fourth down, and Lewis is back in front formation. Now he comes up and shifts back into the wrist ball as if they're going to go for it. They're going to shift out of it again. They got him. They got him. They got him. I've seen that many, many times. That's a first down for Alabama. Now, Auburn's going to argue procedure against the Tide, and we'll just wait and see. Well, I think the quarterback was illegal because he did not stay still one second before he moved out of there. There are a lot of coaches that would not do that. They would not want the first down in that way. Well, that's what they called it against Auburn. Let's watch it again. Lewis is going to run up. He has to stay still for one second. One. Thousand and one. Yes, he does. There Thousand and one. Now it's legal. Now when he shifts again, ball, 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 encroachment, defense, first down. Boy, I tell you that. That's tough to stay in there and keep your head still, isn't it? He did that on Penn State last year and uh, up in uh, Happy Valley on in the first on the first possession. Take it in the middle. Four and the guard. And short gain out of it. Let's again check with Jim Lampley. Now affairs have tightened up even more in Athens, where this 47-yard field goal by Ron Rice, with less than two minutes remaining in the first half, has narrowed the Georgia lead over Georgia Tech to 7-3. Keith? Okay, Jim. Keith, Georgia top rank trying to hang on. Did he say that was the second quarter or third quarter? Second, second quarter. Second down and about eight for Alabama on the Auburn side of the field. And Ken Coley is in the quarterback. And he's loose. And Kenny dives past the marker for a first down at the Auburn 35. What Alabama is doing with the offense is just sensational. They're moving their line around, moving their formation, running, rolling out left, right, play action passes on first down over half of the time. Auburn has never been able to set their defense. Now that Alabama's 405 yards of total offense as to 117 for Auburn. Deep Auburn's defense is the only thing in kicking game that's keeping them in the ball game. They mark Coley down at the 36 for the first down. Gives it off to the first man, the fullback, and he's dropped at the 35, Ricky Moore. It does not look like a football game that has lost three games. Self-destruct. 32 turnovers for Alabama in 10 ball games. 22 fumbles, 10 interceptions. As we look at Pat Dye, who is very worried right now, his defense has not been able to really do anything to stop the Alabama offense. Second down and nine tied. Ball at the Auburn 35. Coley on the 
stops him going the other way. Look at that. You don't think he isn't quick? He doesn't have a sense of where the pressure is. That's another first down for Alabama. Coley has had three knee operations. Number 11, the quarterback. The play is to go to the left. It's an option play. Auburn has it defense perfectly. But watch the presence of mind, as Keith said. And another thing that we should mention, the Alabama offense has played most of the ball game, at, and the Auburn defense must be getting tired. And Coley makes a fine play for the first down. Nine carries, 53 yards for Ken. First down, Alabama. Ball up the Auburn 20. Big guy, Moore, the fullback, to about the 17. Alabama's strategy, as we look at Paul Bear, Brian, and Pat Dye, the two coaches, had coached for Bear for about 10 years here at Alabama before he left and went to East Carolina, Wyoming, and back to Auburn, to the state of Alabama and to Auburn. Moore now is rolling along. Uh, Ricky's got 78 yards on 14 carries. Big day for him. Big day offensively for Alabama. Second down seven. Twenty-five seconds. Ran out for 25 seconds. That's going to cost him five yards. Foley was checking off, looking to change his play and. Well, Keith, when you when you line up in the wishbone with two wide receivers, one on each side, you have to use the audibles to take advantage of the weakness of the defense. Delay, offense, 25 second infraction, second down. What Alabama is doing, if they single cover the receivers, they pass. If they double cover, they run the football. It's very simple, but stopping it is very difficult. Second down and 12. The ball comes back out to the 22. Coley gives it to the halfback, and Joe Carter takes it down to the 10. From the end zone, watch the beautiful blocking. Auburn has spread their defense to cover the receivers, trap block. Moore, the fullback, makes the block, but Joe Carter really breaks around and makes a fine play, but the key block was Gary Bramlin, the offensive guard, number 68. The ball is right on the 10-yard line. First and goal to go for Alabama at the Auburn 10. Alabama 19, Auburn 14. The drive started at the six-yard line of Alabama. Coley shows it to the fullback and gives it to the fullback. Moore with a five. Second down and goal with 3-10 to play in the third quarter. Isn't it a great thing for a coach to have two quarterbacks keep one? It's outstanding pass and a good runner. He gets bunged up a little bit, and his substitute comes in and moves the team from the six-yard line to the opponent's four-yard line, mixing up running and passing. Just inside the five, second down and goal. Get him to about the four, and that'll do it. It's Ben Thomas, a big sophomore from Ashburn, Georgia, rose up to make the stop for Auburn. In terms of good offense, mixing up the offense, listen to this. Alabama's rushed for 219 yards, and they've passed for exactly 219 so far in the ballgame. Ball is still just inside the five. Third down and goal. Matter of starch here. If Alabama takes it uh, 94 yards and sticks it in, it'll take starch out of Auburn. If the Auburn defense can get out of here with a field goal, that'll brace them up. As Coley turns it up field at a one. Fourth and goal. How close is it? If it's close inside of one, you'll go for it. If it's outside of one, or close to two yards, you'll go for the field goal. It's inside the one. He's still going for the field goal to get eight point lead. Field goal would give him eight points. Kim today, Peter Kim has hit from 37 and from 33. This will be a chip shot. And he is one out of three. Inside the 20. Hold is good. The kick is up. Penalty flag on the, play, on the field. If it is against Auburn, that means it's going to be fourth and a foot. Does he take the three points? 
or does he wipe it off and uh, go for the touchdown? He's going for the touchdown. Going for the touchdown. He's going back in there. If it's against Auburn, here, in comes the running backs at least. Though his two captains are coming out to get the call. That's what that was. His two captains are coming out to see exactly what the call is. Here comes the third one, Tommy Wilcox. All three captains are out there, 15 men. <laughs> I've only seen Illegal one time. Procedure. Offense. Oh, it's against no Alabama. Encroachment. Defense. Whoops. No play. Replay it, it down. Play it over. Keith, I've only seen one time in my life where a team took the three points off the goal line. It was Oklahoma in a game against Colorado, and they took the three points off and didn't make the touchdown. Lost the three points and lost the ball. Oh. <clears throat> He'll stay with the field goal unit. Peter Kim. I might add that three points wasn't a factor in the score, in the final score. Now it's an 18 yarder. 18 yards. Second time he's hit it from there. And the second time he has knocked it through. But this time it counts. And Alabama builds its lead 22 to 14. I like it. Did you really like it? I really like it. We can help you get it. We're GMAC. I want it. We're GMAC Financing. Looking for value? It's here at your GM dealer. So pick out your new GM car or truck and get GMAC financing at rates that make good sense. Now at participating GM dealers, get low 10.9 financing on new 82 models. We got it. on a cattle drive you put in long days under the big sky and when the work's over you head for the mountains bush head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream brewed the natural way so it's always as smooth as its name bush head for bush beer Year after year, there is one amateur boxing rivalry like no other. The top two teams in the world, the U.S. and Cuba, next on ABC. Auburn has had the ball one time, one possession in the third quarter. And that last possession, Alabama won 93 yards and held it 8 minutes and 27 seconds. Auburn has had the ball just about a minute in the whole third quarter with 119 to play. And the kickoff by Sanders is beyond the inline. And Auburn will again come back out to its 20 for a first down. ABC's presentation of Monday Night Football matches Miami against Tampa Bay. That's on Monday night. And then Thursday night, a football special for you here on ABC. The San Francisco 49ers, Los Angeles Rams, both of them 9 Eastern time. Both of them, both games are intrastate rivalries. Miami and Tampa and L.A. and uh, San Francisco. Should be heated and emotional. The Rams are having a hard time right now. First down, Auburn at the 20. Out of the eye, go to Jackson. And Bo Jackson runs it to the 30. And he's got a first down. That uh, second time that they have run that ball off that side with Jackson carrying, and uh, last time he got nine, this time he got ten. Up until the Georgia game a week ago, Jackson had the highest average per try in the conference. He was over seven. Now he's 6.5 per try. From the 30. Jackson again. About four yards. Randy Edwards, big junior from Marietta, Georgia, made the tackle for Alabama. And we're now running at 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Alabama defense has been outstanding against the run, and in secondary has done a great job against Auburn's passing back. Lionel James with it. Scrimmage. Jarring tackle by number 49, Steve Booker, strong side linebacker. 
I haven't called Tommy Wilcox's name much today. Tommy's been out on the field much of the day, but he is playing in a relatively fragile condition. As time runs out in the third quarter, Alabama 22, Auburn 14, will continue after this commercial message and the word from our local station. Morning seems to start out better. You seem to go much better. Coffee? Yeah. We'll start the day together. Maxwell House and you. Coffee ready? Get that gun to the last stop here. With Maxwell House, only Maxwell House can do good. To the last stop here. I'm sure you can take your back. I'd like to keep that great GM feeling, Mr. Goodwrench, but how am I supposed to know when to do what? Just watch your 75s. 75s? Here, to help you keep that great GM feeling, your GM maintenance schedule calls for a checkup every 7,500 miles. It looks complicated, Mr. Goodwrench. It isn't. All you have to do is watch the top of the charts and your odometer. We take care of the rest. Keep that great GM feeling. Mr. Goodwrench makes it easy. With genuine GM parts. Controlling high blood pressure, drugs or diet. Monday, watch ABC's World News tonight. You probably never notice your roof until you have to. And that's good because a quality roof from Standard Roofing does its job every day without notice, protecting your family and possessions for many years. A roof from Standard Roofing is fully guaranteed for up to 30 years on materials and up to three years on workmanship. So start noticing Standard Roofing, because we believe in old-fashioned quality at reasonable prices, and we guarantee it. Call us for a free estimate. WKAB, Montgomery. Here we go, the final 15 minutes of this old traditional between Auburn and Alabama. Alabama leading 22-14. It is third down and five Auburn at their own 35. And Randy Campbell. Low, low. No good to Chris Wood. He tried to thread it between two defenders and Woods couldn't come up with it. Let's check in with Jim Lampley again. Keith, we all know about Herschel Walker, but Georgia Tech has a great back of its own and Robert Levette. Levette has overshadowed Walker with 98 yards rushing in the first half. This pass reception by Levette set up a field goal by Ron Rice just before halftime. They've now gone to the half and it's 7-6 Georgia in a battle. Keith? Thank you, Jimmy. And back here in Birmingham now, it's fourth down and five for Auburn. And Lewis Colbert, last three kicks have been dandies, and there's another good one. The roof has two men back to help him on the return, a penalty for the round of 30. That was a 47-yard point. So his first one was bad, but everything since then has been terrific. We've got a timeout. When I'm not on the typewriter, I'm on the phone. I'm either writing about the sea or seeing about my writing, hurrying for a deadline or a phone line. This helps a lot, the calling card from Bell. It makes calling faster, easier, cheaper, and there's no charge for the card. If you're on the phone a lot, it helps a lot. To order, call your telephone business office. I use it everywhere I go. Well, <laughs> almost everywhere. This is an arcade game. This is the new Atari Super System. Hey, Super System. You may like the Super System better. It has some of the best arcade and sports games and plays every Atari cartridge. It even does something no arcade game can. Telephone! It's Judy! It lets you freeze the action. Hello, Judy. The new 5200 Super System. Last year, Arkansas ran hog wild over Texas, trampling their hopes for the national championship. Next Saturday, Texas wants revenge. A Southwest shootout on AB. Hey, 
penalty called against Alabama the receiving team for blocking below the waist on the reception and that backs him up now the ball is marked at the 12 where it'll be first down for the tide and after three periods of play Alabama's big bowls in total offense is so obvious you can see the complete balance in the attack between passing and running 221 to 219 and the turnovers are the only thing that's kept all in the ball game as they've capitalized on a fumble in the air and an interception Ken Coley directing this one and gives the ball off to Lenny Patrick and then bolting out of there across the 20 and out almost to a first down Patrick now a junior out of Jasper Alabama brought down by Mark Dormany a senior from Miami Florida I'm talking about more the offensive coordinator he felt that Auburn's defense would be too tough as we look at the two quarterbacks and the success that they've had running football and also passing but uh, Val Moore told me that they were going to have to throw the ball and they've come out throwing and loosened up the Auburn defense at the 21 second down and one and that's Joe Carter going in motion they give it to Patrick again Patrick trying to get his first down and he's struggling for it with Gerald Williams hanging on to it here's Williams that big 269 pound freshman he's from number 98 look how big you can see the strength in his legs he gets a good charge gets penetration it's a draw play he's going to get trapped by the left offensive guard Adcock number 76 but uh, he runs around the block to play slow enough to make the tackle fine play by the freshman third down and one oh, look at this Auburn stunning just depends where they mark it Patrick again carrying the ball Patrick Lenny Patrick the Alabama tailback is a very interesting story for the Alabama fans he's been in, in hot water with Bear from time to time but he's a very talented player very talented and Bear has stayed with him trying to get him to, to do the things that he should do both on and off the field they're going to bring the change to measure off they're going to call it first down so they move him up after taking a good look at it across the field and with 13.25 to play in the football game, Alabama's got four more snaps. They lead by eight points, 22 to 14. Coley rides it, caught behind the line of scrimmage, gets away from uh, Williams. And finally, Auburn drops him after a yard, maybe. And Gerald Williams making himself known out there now, isn't he? Yes, he, his quickness is what confused the quarterback. Coley, who was trying to read his charge and uh, he misread the play, elected to keep it when it should have possibly handed off to the fullback for a nice game. First half and second half, all one sided, very much of a surprise to us as Alabama's defense had not expected to be this strong. Second down and eight. That's Carter. And Carter is up across the 25. Alabama is going to be looking at third down and about six now, long six. This is the first series off that I've seen Alabama really go conservative, Keith. They've been taking the ball outside or passing on either first or second down and keeping Auburn off balance. They're a little bit worried about a turnover. They don't want to give Auburn field position again. They've been very conservative. Alabama sits out of 10 on third down conversion to Coley back to throw. And they get in the middle and he takes off. But he didn't get his first down. Didn't get his first down. Greg Carr and Dow Auckland. While they had, had opened up the middle, those two came back and closed it, and so Alabama will have to punt. And uh, Malcolm Simmons has not punted yet today. He was in on one punt formation, but Walter Lewis actually wound up uh, doing the kicking. But now Simmons is in there, and he's a good one. Around and find the snap, but he gets a good spin on it. That's another good kick. Lionel James backs up to his 24 and comes back to his 28, and that'll do it. 49 yard punt by Malcolm Simmons with 11 minutes and 23 seconds to play in the ball game. Vitago Creek, Louisiana, and Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. 
Beatico Creek means bass, fat and tasty. And Milwaukee means beer, cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And the smooth golden light taste of old Milwaukee light. Old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Tastes as great as their name. Let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than this. Chevy trucks are taking charge with the all-new S10 Blazer. Available with a revolutionary Instatrack four-wheel drive system. Shift from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. Instatrack. Chevy's got it. Ford doesn't. Dotson doesn't. Toyota doesn't. Chevy S10 Blazer from America's truck sales leader. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. Olympic great Teofilo Stevenson and world champion Tyrell Biggs battle. Bikers attack the grueling course at Carlsbad. Plus, Elaine Zayak and Scott Hamilton dazzle today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. All right, the Goodyear Blimp America with that picture. Legion Field in Birmingham. Now Auburn with the ball. First down. Ball at the 27. And Randy Campbell, who is 3 for 8 for 32 yards in passing. That is a great part of the story of Auburn's failure to move the ball offensively against Alabama today. That pitch goes outside to Lionel James, and he gets it around the corner and gets decent gain out of it before Jeremiah Castillo and Emmanuel King. Out of Number six, Lionel James has had a sensational career for Auburn. Now gained 50 yards today on 11 carries. The ball is marked just outside the 34. It'll be second down about three. Bo Jackson working out of the tailback spot. He breaks it big. Inside the Alabama 15. Out of bounds at the tied 13. Tommy Wilcox and Jeremiah Castillo had a little bit of an angle on him. Otherwise, they would have never caught him. 52. Watch the blocking on your left. Lionel James, number six, he just rolled up the cornerback, made the place possible. You see Jackson, just a freshman, make a sensational run, giving Auburn, watch the corner of your screen. Watch Jack James, he rolled up the, uh, Will Cox, the strong safety, and then Jackson made the free safety missing, which was uh, blue, big gain, and another opportunity for Auburn. First down at the Alabama 13, and they hand it inside. Goes to Greg Pratt, the fullback. 220 pounder spins it down to about the nine. Keith, and going back to that last play, in looking at film, Lionel James is the best one-on-one -on -one blocker for a back in the wishbone attack that I've ever seen play. Mark that ball just inside the eight. Give uh, Pratt five yards on that carry and make it second down and five. There's word. I don't blame him. Again, inside with it, and uh, Campbell trying to come off that snap. That's the second time today that he has got tangled up coming off the snap. He never really delivered the ball. He could look like the left guard. Stokes, who happens to be a freshman, retreated a little bit, got right in his feet, right in, uh, tangled up with Campbell's feet, the quarterback. So it's third down and still about five. They ran the draw play. Extensive play, that one. Double wide. Out of the wishbone. Campbell getting pressure from the backside, and they get him down at about the six. It was one of those defensive ends. I think it was Mike Pitts coming from the backside. It was. It's good Big call. Pitts. Keith Mike was playing on the left side because he's playing towards the tight end. He came all the way across the line, all the way across to catch the quarterback. And now Auburn will send out the field goal unit with nine minutes and 20 seconds to play in the ball game. Al Del Greco will try one from 23 yards. Del Greco kicked six, six field goals against the cut this season. Up there, and it's good. So Del Greco hits from 23. 
And with 9.06 to play in the ball game, Auburn is still in the hunt. Alabama 22 and Auburn 17. Say, Mike. You found them. Do you do tune-ups? All the time, lady. Yes, but can you guarantee your tune-ups for a year with free follow-ups? At Goodyear, when we tune your engine, we back our good work with a 12-month guarantee. A guarantee that's got our good name on it. Now, who else can give you that? A year guarantee on a tune-up? For auto service that's guaranteed, come up to Goodyear. When I'm not making music with the Charlie Daniels Band, you'll find me here at home in Tennessee. And where you find me, you'll find my skull. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum, and it sure feels good. In fact, I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And my place here, <laughs> that's something I just can't get too much of. Enjoy tobacco without lighting up. Try Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. Year of golden anniversary, the Southeastern Conference meets opponents coast to coast on an even basis. AP and UPI both rate Georgia number one, the Bulldogs, Alabama and Auburn, and four other SEC teams, LSU, Florida, Tennessee and Vanderbilt. Seven all told will play in bowls. Time remaining, 9.06. Five point lead for Alabama. Del Greco will kick off for Auburn. Joey Jones deep to receive it for the Tide. And it's a high hanger that drifts off to the other side of the field for Craig Turner in the end zone. He puts it down. Alabama will have the ball. First down at its 20. Georgia and Georgia Tech at halftime. The engineers on two field goals. And uh, they hold a Herschel Walker. He had one big bolt for 59 yards, if I heard it correctly, the first half. It's that scoreboard that means so much to Georgia. Ranked number one and headed for a Matt Sugar Bowl. Walter Lewis comes back in in this series at quarterback for Alabama. And Lewis is six for six and 72 yards in this half. Passing. On the way. Delivers it. The pass intended for Vendross up the field. And it looked to me like that number 35 Jeff Fagan might have reached up in the air and tried to make the catch and tipped it away. Bob Harris was there covering. Bob Harris was the strong safety covering the short man. Looked like that uh, Lewis tried to throw the ball too low. As the Auburn drive scoring summary five plays 67 yards. Most of it on the ground by one run. Bo Jackson the freshman. The sensational freshman. Second down and ten. Gives the ball to Caruth. And Caruth has a first down for Alabama out at the 31. Alabama broke on top to lead 7 to nothing. Then Auburn came back to tie it. And it's been so Alabama got an eight-point lead. And now they're trying to sit on the ball. And they really dominated the third quarter of play with this kind of offensive control. Get him over. Now here in the fourth quarter, they're trying to reassert themselves again and drive it a long way and gobble away at the clock. Now running at 8.45 to play in the game. From the 31, first down. Pullback. And it's Ricky Moore. Coming up on ABC's Wide World of Sports today, we've got uh, Theo Stevenson against Tyrell Biggs, and then the amateur boxing competition, you'll see the USA team against the Cubans in a dual meet. Again, a measurement of how our young people are developing as they point toward the 1984 Olympic Games. Alabama now with 25 first downs in this game. Auburn 7, Walter Lewis trying to get outside and around the corner. And Christopher Martin will have none of it. Just a sensational play by Chris Martin, the linebacker, in terms of uh, what his assignment, check the fullback, the fullback didn't have the ball, scrapes off outside and penetrates and tackles Lewis behind the line of scrimmage. The ball is now sitting at the 33. It is third down and eight for Alabama. Oh, Alabama going very conservative again. Ron 
inside pressure. Lewis gets it off, and it is almost intercepted. Dow Ortman, number 61, the big middle guard, got his hands on it. Ben Thomas was the man making life miserable for Walter Lewis. Lewis was rushed out of the pocket. He actually just drifts. He should not have thrown the ball because it could have been intercepted. Number 61, Ortman, as Keith mentioned, nose guard is all the way over there. Thinking it's a screen. Watch it. It goes right through his hand. Could have given Auburn another scoring opportunity on Alabama mistakes. Malcolm Simmons in the punt. One time today, 49 yards. No pressure on it. Left quarter, knuckle balls it upfield. Depends on the bounce. Takes an Auburn bounce. It comes back up. And it's put down. So the Auburn Tigers are going to get the football first down at their own 33 with 7.06 to play in the game. There's a hungry kind of feeling. Oh. And every day oh. it grows. You know there's so much more to you than anybody knows. In the Army, we do more before 9 a.m than most people do all day. Hey, First Sergeant. Good morning. Cause we need you in the army. A special Christmas gift from Radio Shack. The TRS-80 color computer at $100 off. Instant loading program packs turn our color TV into a game arcade. The color computer is also an education center. There are over 30 games available. And it's perfect for home management. She's right. With a programmable, expandable computer, you can do more than just play games. Why, our son's even learning how to program. Save $100 on the TRS-80 color computer. Only at Radio Shack, the computer experts. Year after year, there is one amateur boxing rivalry like no other. The top two teams in the world, the U.S. and Cuba, next on ABC. Time now becoming very precious. 7.06. All Bryant, checkered hat, walking the sideline. 22-17, his team leads. Pat Dye, realizing that he may not get his, have his team get their hands on that ball too many more times. Trying to get an offensive series going now. First down from the 33. Campbell on an option. Outside the Jackson, Dave Jackson comes over the top. And he reaches the 36. That's a three yard pickup. Stan Gay coming up from the right corner. Good support on it. He and Russ Wood made the stop. And now Chris Woods. A quick wide out for Auburn comes to the ball game. Frank, they got a throw zone. And yet they're very limited in their pass attack. Campbell is not a strong pass at all in quarterback. Five man defensive front for Alabama. Five four. Campbell puts it up. And Woods has got it. They're going to mark him at the 46 for a first down. Nope, they mark it closer to the 45. Woods, number one, is going to push deep, turn, and he waits on the ball. The ball, he wants it right now. Ball's a little bit late. That looks like he may be trying. No, I don't believe he's no. trying to lateral it. He does make a good run. After the catch, he's 20 yards of reception for the season. Al Blue, number 34, involved. So is Tony Wilcox, 15. And it's first down for Auburn at 45. Auburn's finally over 200 yards in total offense today. Goes to Lionel James. And he sort of ducks his head and finds a little crack in there. He gets about four yards. Clock running, 5.50. Well, if they can grind it down there and stick it in the end zone, they'd have a lead. They'd also have a tough decision to make on whether to go for one or two. And then Alabama, if Auburn continues to grind it, it's going to have very little time in which to counter. Down the sideline and thrown over the head of the intended receiver, Chris Woods. I think Woods might have moved up the field too soon. He was coming back and we went in motion to the sidelines, coming back toward. Him. And then when he went back, I think he turned up field a little bit. That's a planned play. And the official didn't catch it. They should have won the play, won the official. Pat Dye told me that was one of the plays where the man is close enough to the line. I'm sure Pat's going to yell at him and try to get his attention because really the man was legal. He wasn't a substitute, as he described the play to me yesterday. 
and they're arguing about it over on the sideline right now. The officials missed the play because it's really a very legal play. All that the receiver was doing was going in motion. Yeah, but I thought he turned up the But field. he could have turned legal up too quickly. You're right. Offense declined. They were, Third down. What they were trying to do is make Alabama think he was going off the field, and he would have been open. Alabama thought that he was going off as an extra substitute. That was a planned play. It didn't work. He had him open. 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 The flag, of course, had negated it. The Auburn sideline still hollering about it. I don't blame him. I don't think the official knew what really what happened. In, the, in, a, in a play like that, you have to warn the officials about it, and the ref and the quarterback should tell the referee, "Here it comes," so that uh, they'll understand what's happening. Third down and seven from the 49. We go to Bo Jackson. Uh, he's close. Well, they put him down. They're going to get him inside the 45, close to the 44. Well, now Auburn's going to be in a fix here. I think they'll have to go. They'll Five minutes and 16 seconds. To play. They'll have to go, but the linesman marking the ball, really, you can hear the Auburn people boo it because he brought the ball back a good two feet. Bo Jackson now, 12 carries and 100 yards. Just short. Just short. Sure, they've got to go for it. They've got no choice. But I want to tell you, the official spot that ball brought it back a good two feet. Well, he just marked it on the first time. <laughs> sure, I thought it was correct. I thought it, it, it actually had another two or three feet. Well, the big guy goes over the, over the top. There are certain things that Jackson does that uh, looks a lot like Herschel Walker, that being one of them. And obviously, he's got the first down as they put the ball just inside the Alabama 43. The critical yardage, you think they'd go to the big back blocking and a little back carrying the ball. They go just the reverse with Gene blocking and freshman Jackson carrying it. Staying in the wishbone now. Goes to Jackson. And he's hit at the fourth. Mike Rodriguez, a big junior from Melbourne, Florida. Auburn has plenty of time to mix up their running. Coming down to close to four minutes and 40 seconds, they've got time to possession tight passing and hoping that either James or Jackson, both very capable, are breaking the long run. Second down, a little over seven for the first down. Just short of the Alabama four. Andy Campbell wants to throw. They run him out of the pocket and then suck him. But the Alabama defense again rises up and they get Campbell back at the 46. Randy Edwards and Russ Wood. Play action pass, which means the receivers have better be open. Campbell gets one look. There it is. It's not there, and your lineman cannot protect any longer. All you quarterback can do is start scrambling, but I guess that's uh, Edwards, number 96, just yes, makes the play. Now Auburn is in serious trouble, third and long, extra long. Third and 14. Campbell goes to Edwards to the 31-yard line and a first down. Big Mike Edwards pulled it in. This is a great throw by by Campbell, watch him rifle that ball. Sue, look at the tight sparrow. There wasn't much room there. It took a perfect throw to Edwards. Watch Edwards get open right on the toughest place to defend by the defensive back is as close to the sideline as possible. You can see the game was close to him, but not enough to make the play. And we've got a timeout with three minutes and 30 seconds to play in the ball game. You know, this hat is the sign of one of America's largest, most important insurance companies, Fireman's Fund. But right now, we're going to beat the drums for a sign that's even more important to you. It belongs to the independent agents who sell our insurance, who choose from several companies to find the best policy and price. So look for the sign of the independent agents. They work for you to beat the band in the yellow pages. 
Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. Burger Keith, wrestle up some of that stairs, throws beer. Coming up. Excuse me. My, my, that sure looks free. Mm -hmm. Mighty tasty, Slim. Plum, where's the trip, Colorado? We come a thousand miles for this here Stroh's bear. Not surprising. Happens every day. Yeah? Excuse me. I say, old chap, a cold bottle of Stroh's, please. <laughs> I like you. Last year, Arkansas ran hog wild over Texas, trampling their hopes for the national championship. Next Saturday, Texas wants revenge. A Southwest shootout on ABC. Well, things are buzzing at Legion Field right now as Auburn has the football. First down, just short of the Alabama 30. Three and a half minutes to play in the game. And Alabama leading by five points. Randy Campbell on third and 14 through for 15 to get the first down. Campbell puts it up again, goes to Edwards and throws it behind him. Edwards was open right in front of Castile, but Campbell missed him. Just the perfect time to blitz for Alabama. You're in trouble, go after it. Opponents make something happen. Wilcox was coming from the wide side of the field and Gay from the corner from the back side. and ten for Auburn. Six man front. Wilcox is up on the line. And over the middle it goes for Chris Wood. It is intercepted by Castile. I think they're going to call Castile for pass interference. I believe it was a good call. Castile hit the receiver before the ball was there. Auburn had a, uh, Alabama had a safety blitz on. That's the reason there was no safety man playing man for man coverage. Castile has intercepted seven passes, 16 in his career, all American on this by most of the teams this year. It'll be first down and go to go for Auburn inside the Alabama 10. This watch, is the pass interference. Watch Woods. First down. Woods has territorial rights. Castile, number 19, cannot make contact before the ball gets to the receiver. There it is, right there. Contact. The safety blitz was on. Man for man coverage is what Alabama was playing. Very good call by the officials. Now Auburn Keith has first down on the nine, which is the toughest place to have a first down. That's right. If you're going to get one inside the ten, please let me have it on the six or the five, not on the nine. Well, my goodness. First and goal from the nine. Penalty flags down as the ball goes to Jackson and the whistle stop it. Both sides were moving and I don't know who moved first. Well, the tight end did move, number 85. Head west. But I don't know whether he was drawn or not. It's against Auburn. Oh my goodness. Boys, boys, boys. Well, that makes it first and fifth and 14, Keith, and that's hard. Red ball foul. Illegal procedure. Offense. Auburn had the football at the Georgia 14, first half, and couldn't put it in with a chance to beat Georgia. It was three minutes on the clock, and uh, Georgia stopped them to preserve their victory. Now it's first and goal at the Alabama 14. After the five-yard penalty, and Campbell back to throw. Going for Chris Woods. No. Defending Castile. Second down and goal. Auburn, as we look at Bear Bryant, who is, has to be worried. Watch the play of Castile and Woods. 101, number 19. Castile has already been selected, all American. He's got outside responsibility. He's beaten deep. The ball was thrown too far to the outside. If Campbell could have laid it up over the head of Castile, it could have possibly been a touchdown. Three minutes and 14 seconds to play in the game. Alabama leading by five. Safety blitz. There it comes. Outside the boat, Jackson. And Jackson is cut down at the 10. And the man who had the pressure on him was number 89, Russ Wood. 
when I say safety blitz, the most unusual free safety blitz, which yeah. is coming up the middle. Normally when we say safety blitz, we're talking about Wilcox coming from the corner. But Wilcox was coming from the corner and also the free safety blue was coming right up the middle. Now they're back to where they started with the ball before the penalty. But it's third down. Auburn's defense has just kept them in the football game and the offense has made just enough to have a chance to win. Auburn now takes time out. There seems some indecision and rather than blow a play, they call a timeout. Auburn with one timeout remaining. Alabama has all three remaining. Two minutes and 45 seconds to play. And Alabama leading 22 to 17. All kinds of conjecture available here. Suppose they don't make the touchdown on third down. What do you do? Do you go ahead and kick the field goal, make it a 22-20 ball game? And if you can have lightning strike for you, hold Alabama maybe get the ball back and make a big play then you've got a chance to win with a field goal those are some options they both are going to have to consider here's Jim Lampley you're looking at a live shot from Sanford Stadium in Athens Georgia where Georgia looked more assertive on its first possession of the third quarter than they had previously Herschel Walker has now gone over 100 yards in the game Kevin Butler kicked a field goal at the end of the Georgia drive and the dogs have extended their lead over Georgia Tech to 10-6. Earlier, incidentally, I passed along a statistical mistake, Keith. I was told that Keith Jacks or that uh, Herschel Walker needed 181 yards to move into the number three spot on all-time NCAA rushing. He needed only 81 yards, and as a consequence, he has become the number three man on the list today. Now back to Keith Jackson. And with a year to go. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the Alabama side is holding its breath. The Auburn side is roaring lustily here at Legion Field on third down and goal. Campbell puts it up. He's got it to Bo Jackson. Jackson is down just short of the goal line. He's a foot away. He that was a sensational catch and effort by the freshman, Bo Jackson. Watch this again. He is coming out of the backfield in the short flat. The ball is right on target. So watch what this freshman does. You can see why many people say he's the second best talent in the Southeast. He's going over the top, trying to get there, and he gets right to the one foot line. I think it's Wilcox down. It is Tommy Wilcox who made the saving tackle, and Tommy just went at him. He only knows how to play football one way, and that's full bore. So he came in there playing hurt at 195 pounds, and he took on that big running back who weighs with that all that gear on him close to 230 pounds. It was a massive collision, and Wilcox is down. With two and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Now you see that Georgia has edged out to a four-point lead over Georgia Tech. Number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs. My heart is beating fast as if I was coaching, and I'm not kidding. This is a tremendous opportunity for Pat Dye, who is in his second year as we look at Bear, trying to figure out how close is it. There's Pat. Go get him. What a fine young football coach he is. Boy, this would put him ahead of schedule if he could upset Alabama today. Fourth down, goal to go, a half a yard. Give the ball to Jackson over the top, the same play they made on short yardage. Uh, earlier in the drive back on the 30 yard line. Wilcox is up now and Tommy's going to walk off. I remember another Alabama defensive back who made a marvelous play in the Sugar Bowl to save a game uh, against Penn State. Don McNeil. Remember that? Oh, he did. Same type of play, in fact. Yep. He tackled the, re the receiver on the same type play at the one yard line. Penn State went over the top twice and Alabama threw it back and won the national championship in a game that we'll all remember. And we'll have another national championship game, it looks like, if Georgia can stay ahead in the Sugar Bowl January the 1st. If, if Auburn should score, Keith, I think they'll go for two uh, to try to uh, force Alabama to go for the touchdown to win the game, give them a three-point lead. First things first. Fourth and goal and a half a yard. Jackson! Touchdown!
minutes and 26 seconds to play in the ball game. Auburn will go for two. 23-22 Auburn. They're going to try to make it 25. Campbell is hit down by Russ Wood. The two-point try fails. So they go 66 yards and 14 plays to take a one-point lead, 23-22, with 2.26 to play. We are USA One. Taking charge with a Chevrolet so versatile. It's part moving van, part school bus, part camper, and part sporty car. The front-wheel drive Chevy Citation, outselling every other front-wheel drive over the past three years combined. USA One is taking charge. Joan, where can I find a good stereo for the office? I'll find out. Save time and energy. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks when you let your fingers do the walking. Ava, complete line of office supplies. Sam Stereo. Doctor. Sam Stereo. Sensational sounds abound. That's remarkable. No, it's sensational. I'm Sam. Get the Yellow Pages talking. Sensational. Let your fingers do the walking. Well, there's your whole story right there on the scoreboard. Del Greco ready to kick it off. Joey Jones deep for Alabama. 2.26. Alabama with three timeouts left. It's a high hanger. But Jones, he's three, four yards deep in the end zone. He isn't going to mess with it. He knows Auburn's all jacked up. So he's going to just take it at the 20 and let him cool a little bit. They have the numbers on the touchdown drive. And Obviously, the offense has been ineffective, but when they had to, they moved 66 yards when it meant the difference of possibly winning or losing the football game. Perfect example of the defense keeping you in the ball game. Good kicking, good defense, no turnovers. You always have a chance to win. Alabama has thrown the ball well today, 219 yards. That's their highest passing total of the season. Walter Lewis is the quarterback. He gets it off. It is incomplete and almost intercepted by Dennis Collier. Hit him right on the breastbone. Right on the numbers. I think if I was playing my defense against Walter Lewis, as we look at this play, Collier, number 47, gets a good break on the ball. He's coming so hard into the pass that he couldn't control it. I believe I would rush Lewis. He's too good. Scrambling gives too much time. Yep. I believe I'd go after him with this. But this. Second down and ten. Set it up to Ricky Moore, the fullback. And Moore is up to the 24. <laughs> Doug Smith hit him in charge. Smith, 266, 265. And Gerald 64, 242 was putting the pressure on Lewis that time Moore is shaken up and a timeout for him with two minutes and four seconds to play in the ball game and uh, you can see there in that graphic that this man Paul Bryant has never lost three games in a row in a single season the same season at Alabama. Well there since he went to the wishbone in 1971 has won 116 games and lost only 15 and tied one. It is third down and six at the 24. Lewis is dangerous. He's got enough room for his first down, but he throws the ball and it ricochets out of the hands of Ben Gross up at the 40. Lewis could have run for it, but he saw Ben Gross upfield and he hit him right in the stomach with the ball. I've seen Bear Bryant have all the luck in the world to go with his great ability, his team. Here is a tough break. Ben Dross is an excellent receiver. The ball is right there. Somehow he cannot control it, and it falls incomplete. Auburn is very lucky. Fourth down and six, and Alabama's going. With a minute 53 to play. Lewis back. Loops it upfield, and is intercepted! He tried to touch the ball, and Bob Harris intercepts it at the Alabama 30. 
His second interception of the ball game with a minute and 45 seconds to play. And it looks like Auburn has a great opportunity now to break a long drought. Auburn has not beaten Alabama since 1972 with a famous block kick game, 17 to 16. They put it down at the 31. Keith, I, I just want to mention again, as we look at Bear, we know how disappointed he must be. It's amazing that coaches have said all along, if you don't beat yourself, you'll stay in the football game. But in tight play at the one yard line, Penn State went over the top twice and Alabama threw it back and won the national championship in a game that we'll all remember. And we'll have another national championship game, it looks like, if Georgia can stay ahead in the Sugar Bowl January the 1st. If, if Auburn should score, Keith, I think they'll go for two uh, to try to uh, force Alabama to go for the touchdown to win the game. Give them a three-point lead. First things first. Fourth and goal and a half a yard. Jackson! Touchdown! seconds to play in the ball game. Auburn will go for two. 23-22 Auburn. They're going to try to make it 25. Campbell is hit down by Russ Wood. The two-point try fails. So they go 66 yards and 14 plays to take a one-point lead, 23-22, with 2.26 to play. USA 1. Taking charge with a Chevrolet so versatile. It's part moving van, part school bus, part camper, and part sporty car. The front wheel drive Chevy Citation, outselling every other front wheel drive over the past three years combined. USA 1 is taking charge. Joan, where can I find a good stereo for the office? I'll find out. Save time and energy. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks when you let your fingers do the walking. Ava, complete line of office supplies. Sam Stereo. Doctor. Sam Stereo. Sensational sounds abound. That's remarkable. No, it's sensational. I'm Sam. Get the Yellow Pages talking. Sensational. Let your fingers do the walking. Well, there's your whole story right there on the scoreboard. Del Greco ready to kick it off. Joey Jones deep for Alabama. 2.26. Alabama with three timeouts left. It's a high hanger. But Jones, he's three, four yards deep in the end zone. He isn't going to mess with it. He knows Auburn's all jacked up. So he's going to just take it at the 20 and let him cool a little bit. They have the numbers on the touchdown drive. And Obviously, the offense has been ineffective, but when they had to, they moved 66 yards when it meant the difference in possibly winning or losing the football game. Perfect example of the defense keeping you in the ball game. Good kicking, good defense, no turnovers. You always have a chance to win. Alabama has thrown the ball well today, 219 yards. That's their highest passing total of the season. Walter Lewis is the quarterback. He gets it off. It is incomplete and almost intercepted by Dennis Collier. Hit him right on the breastbone. Right on the numbers. I think if I was planning my defense against Walter Lewis, as we look at this play, Collier, number 47, gets a good break on the ball, comes up, but he's coming so hard into the pass that he couldn't control it. I believe I would rush Lewis. He's too good. Yeah. Scrambling against too much time. 
Yep. I believe I'd go after him with this. But just second down and ten. Set it up to Ricky Moore, the fullback. And Moore is up to the 24. Doug Smith hit him, and Smith hit him hard. Smith 266, 265. And Gerald Robinson, 6'4", 242, was putting the pressure on Lewis that time. Moore is shaken up in a timeout for him with two minutes and four seconds to play in the ball game. And uh, you can see there in that graphic that this man, Paul Bryant, has never lost three in a row in a single season, the same season at Alabama. Well, Bear, since he went to the wishbone in 1971, has won 116 games and lost only 15 and tied one. It is third down and six at the 24. Lewis has just got enough room for his first down, but he throws the ball and it ricochets out of the hands of Ben Gross up at the 40. Lewis could have run for it, but he saw Ben Gross upfield and he hit him right in the stomach with the ball. I've seen Bear Bryant have all the luck in the world to go with his great ability, his team. Here is a tough break. Ben Gross is an excellent receiver. The ball is right there. Somehow he cannot control it and it falls incomplete. Auburn is very lucky. Fourth down and six, and Alabama's going with a minute 53 to play. Lewis back. Loops it upfield and is intercepted. He tried to touch the ball, and Bob Harris intercepts it at the Alabama 30. His second interception of the ball game with a minute and 45 seconds to play. And it looks like Auburn has a great opportunity now to break a long drought. Auburn has not beaten Alabama since 1972 with a famous block kick game, 17 to 16. They put it down at the 31. Keith, I, I just want to mention again, as we look at Bear, we know how disappointed he must be. It's amazing that coaches have said all along, if you don't beat yourself, you'll stay in the football game with a good defense. And Auburn has been patient. They have not turned the ball over. They have had good kicking, and they're about to win the biggest game probably of Pat Dye's career. 145 to play. Lionel James going to run as wide as he can and as long as he can. And they've got him down at about the 25. Jeremiah Castillo. Brought him down. Let's look at the interception. I think it was really a poor choice. I would have come back and repeated the play that they had open uh, on third down. But uh, Lewis is throwing out of the pocket. This doesn't give him a chance to scramble or make the first down on the run. He's not as good out of the pocket. Something Alabama has added this year, and he just lays it up perfect for interception. Great play by the defense. Throwing to an unlikely receiver in Craig Turner at that particular time. He tried to touch it in, and it exploded in his face. Time out. Some years ago, the Army asked Fram to design a special air filter to protect helicopter engines against the dust they kick up when they land. So we made this special double filter. Today, we make the same kind of thing for cars, the Fram Extra Life. It works like two filters in one. It traps 50% more dirt than our old single filter, but it doesn't cost any more. The Fram Extra Life, 50% extra protection at no extra cost. Oh. 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 Thank you, Payne Weber. I like it. I love it. I'll take it. Mm. Thank you, Payne Weber. In this highly competitive financial world, Payne Weber believes the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your investments. The time now becomes the most dramatic factor. 126 to play in the bowl game. Alabama with two timeouts remaining. Auburn with one. All Auburn wants to do is run it around, run around, run the clock down. On second down and five. Campbell gives to James. James pops it over the right side and 
struggles to about the 22 before Rodriguez can stop his forward motion and Wilcox is back in the ball game for Alabama. Tommy took a whack in the head when he took on Bo Jackson. Alabama spends another of its timeouts. Now the clock shows 1.13 to play in the ball game. Well, as you said, Frank, if Auburn holds on now, as they're looking at third down and a yard to win this ball game, I don't think there's any question the biggest win Pat Dye's career. Pat Dye has his record uh, isn't as impressive as other coaches because he's turned three jobs around. East Carolina had a losing program. He came back, turned it to a winning program. Same at Wyoming, and he's doing it all, but he's definitely ahead of schedule at Auburn. If he should win this game, make an 8-3 and victory over Alabama. Pat Dye. The most valuable players in the ball game for Auburn, Bo Jackson, running back. Jackson, 16 carries, 110 yards, and a touchdown. For Alabama, Walter Lewis, 14 out of 24, 204 yards, a touchdown. And uh, each university will receive from Chevrolet in the names of those players $1,000 each for their general scholarship fund. Third down and one. Alabama's got to hold them if they have any hopes. Jackson over the top. Fumbles the football, Alabama's got it. Can you believe it? In a minute and nine seconds to play in the ball game. Bo Jackson went over the top, the ball came loose, and here's Alabama, not dead yet. Not with Walter Lewis scrambling at quarterback. Let's see if we can detect why the ball pops out. Jackson, right, the right half back is going over the top. Oh, he had it out there like a loaf of bread, and it came right down on somebody's the ball. Home. Way back out here. Yes, he lost going up to see what. From the 21 for Alabama, first down in a minute and nine seconds to play, and Walter Lewis on a roll. He's got Ben Gross open. Jesse holds on to it. And it's a first down for Alabama up at the 36. 15 yards on the pass. And the clock stops while the chains are moved. A minute and two to play in a ball game. A field goal can win it for Alabama. 23-22 Auburn. Each team now with one timeout remaining. Ben Drawson, Jerry Jones, the white people. 56 seconds to go in the ball game. Walter Lewis. He gets his pass off. The pass is complete. And it's good for a first down up at the 47. And again, the clock will stop with 48 seconds to play. It's the same pass that Ben Rose dropped on third down in the previous possession. They've gone to it twice. And both times it's open. The linebacker should stay in on the curl, force him to throw the ball short outside. Now the chain is down, and the clock is running at 42 seconds to play. Walter Lewis again rolling out. Has time, gets it off to the sideline. Too long. And it's incomplete. Ben Dross coming out of bounds to make the catch. Keith, he was wide open. Yes. Lewis just held the ball a little bit too long. At this rate, uh, Auburn, Alabama can make two pass completions and be in field goal range. I still would rush. I still would go after Lewis. I would not defend in this situation on every down. Lewis is too good. 35 seconds to play in the ball game. One point lead for Auburn, 23-22. Lewis back, getting a little pressure this time. Auburn, and he throws the ball. That may be grounding. It was Ben Thomas, number 91, that got him, and it's intentional grounding against Walter Lewis. And 30 seconds to play. I'm, I'm really surprised that uh, they had a running play fake. There's no need to fake the running play with 30 seconds on the clock. That just gives the defense time to penetrate. And, uh, of course, uh, Auburn came to the backside. And... Intentional grounding, also down, third down. Well, the ball comes back now to the Alabama 25. See, he's faking, Keith, and you don't get as good a protection there. Lewis is best rolling out. They've got to go to the Auburn 43 for the first down. And they need 32 yards. Pressure. Got him by the coattail, but he gets away and dumps it off to Craig Turner. And Turner to the sidelines and out of bounds up at the 30. Now 20 seconds to play in the game. 
Putting a little pressure on Lewis now, and that's what's important. Alabama's not known really for their passing uh, statistics. They are play-action pass when they're in the ball game, not from a come-behind situation. So their protection is not quite as good as the normal passing teams would be. Again, that was Ben Thomas, the big sophomore, 267-pounder that had a hold of Walter Lewis. Lewis broke away. Walter 6'1", 209 himself. 20 seconds to play in the game. It is fourth down. They've got to go to the Auburn 43 for a first down. They've got to go deep. He got it over the middle, and it is incomplete. And with 13 seconds to play in the ball game, Auburn gets the ball. Quincy Williams was back, and he forced Walter Lewis to throw the ball. Lewis was looking deep. He didn't have anybody deep. And then when Williams arrived, he had to let it go. It shows again that the offense going up and down the field, unless you put it in the goal line, doesn't mean all that much. Alabama controlled the offensive ball, made close to 500 yards total offense, and still is going to get beat by a team that's just over 200 yards. Two big plays. The fumble snatched out of the air and returned for 62 yards. And the interception, the two interceptions, actually by James. No, not James. Uh, the safety man. For Auburn. Bob Harris. Bob Harris. Well, they'll count it down. It's a happy day for the Auburn Tigers and their partisans. They come storming out onto the field. There's five seconds remaining to play in the ball game. They're trying to tear down the goalpost. I don't know if they can ever restore order after this. They're probably just as well now to let things run off and time expire. Three teams have beaten Alabama this year, Tennessee, LSU, and Auburn, that haven't beaten them in over a decade. Well, everything in life is cyclical, and the cycle means around, and you can't avoid it. Sooner or later, you're going to have to have a few down times, and he's had few. And they're going to let the clock run off now, and the game is over. Paul Bryant walks off, losing for the first time since 1972 to Auburn. As Pat Dye's youngsters rose up when the occasion offered them, when the opportunity was in front of them, and they stuck it in the end zone. And the final score, Auburn 23, Alabama 22. to tear that goal post down and just hope no one gets hurt Keith, yes. because it's going to fall right into the crowd of people in just a minute that's heavy metal i remember one time up at michigan state seeing a young man climb up on one of those uh, metal goal posts and he wound up with an injury a serious injury and let's just hope that 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 end of it that's sticking way up in the air now doesn't come crashing down on somebody been a long cry spell for the Auburn War Eagle fans, but probably as enthusiastic as any in America. So the celebration is on in the loveliest village of the plains. Polatuck, the Arctic Circle. The winters can be 10 months long and 50 below. So people stay home and watch a lot of TV. Maybe that's why the Takiyak family chose the only TV to win an Emmy for its beautiful picture, the Sony Trinitron. But maybe the Takiyaks chose a Sony because the nearest TV repair man is 250 miles away. The Florida Keys and Milwaukee, Wisconsin are a whole country apart. But to these guys, they both mean something great. The Keys mean stone crab, big and fresh. And Milwaukee means beer, cold, crisp old Milwaukee. And the smooth, golden light taste of old Milwaukee light. And man, what they made for food like this. And old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Tastes as great as its day. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> 
Once again, our final score, Auburn 23, Alabama 22. Stay tuned for the Federal College School Board, bringing up to date on all the scores from around the country. The blip provided by Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This a presentation of ABC Sports. Monday. Bryant Show, which is brought to you by Ice Cold Coca-Cola. The local dealers across the state are the Kerosene Heater and our ever so good friends from Golden Flake and Coast. Today, I believe we have just potato chips. Out of me yesterday. Well, I wouldn't know about that. They're entitled to something. As a matter of fact, uh, until I play, regardless of what happens, the sun will come up the next day. It, uh, it didn't come up today for a lot of people. I'm one of them. And I'm very thankful for a lot of things. They have a lot to be thankful for. And um, I'm not so thankful for Auburn to have a, uh, at least a year of uh, coming out in them tracks and trucks and things. <laughs> I'm going to get on my mule and where I can be friends. But uh, the thing I feel was so bad about the game about is I think our team played very, very well. I think they played real hard. We had great effort. And we had enough effort to win a ball game. We had enough effort to win any ball game. And we gave it away with uh, fumbles and interceptions. And I've always said, and I'll say again, the mistakes are two things. It's, it's coaching and demanding on the field, on the practice field. You go out there, I saw the paper this morning. Uh, one of our fine backs carrying a ball exactly like a watermelon. Well, you're going to fumble the ball to carry it like a watermelon. If I put up with it in practice and don't demand we do it different, do it over and over and over, not as punishment, but to teach them to do those things, it won't happen. And on the other hand, the other team forces you into some of those things. Uh, and Auburn did a good job of that. Auburn played a fine football game. I think that even after uh, they got their last touchdown, that uh, they had a few thoughts that we might win. We started moving the ball up the field. I, and I certainly thought we might win. I think our players thought we might win. I think I hurt the chances of winning two or three times. The first time, uh, or two different times, we're going to running on uh, four, fourth down for, for a yard gain. If we make the yard, we're still not in for the touchdown. I'd do the same thing again, but under the circumstances. But the, this is Monday morning talk. And uh, running a play, there's no fake to it. If he's doing a fake give, uh, Maybe we'd had a chance. And then we went on a one-yard line and kicking the field goal. Of course, my reasoning then was perfectly sound. If we kick the field goal, we got, they got to score twice to beat us. On the other hand, we only like it that far to go. And if you have a, a way our team was coming off the ball, our line was coming off the ball, and our backs were blocking well, I think. Well, we should make it Thank you for what Auburn University stands for. Please let us be humble and victory and proud. Most of all, we thank you for being at Auburn. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you, the ones that want to, I'm going to go back out there and thank our people.
A Auburn beat Alabama 23 to 22. Coach, two years ago, someone said, how long is it going to take you to beat Alabama? And you said 60 minutes, and you were right. Well, nobody's ever beat them in less than that that I know about. Uh, Phil, it was a great win for us. It was an emotional win for us, and, and uh, one that we were mighty fortunate to win. Uh, Coach Bryant had said earlier that they would be the best that they've been along, and he was exactly right. I, I, the films that I looked at of Alabama <coughs> played better yesterday than the films today, and that Alabama played a really outstanding football game. Uh, they played hard. Coaching staff did a great job in game preparation, and and, um, and they did everything but win the game. And of course, our staff did a great job getting our kids ready. And the thing that that won for us, of course, was the thing that has won for us at other times this year: not turning the football over and right. not making the mistakes that'll beat you. Uh, I thought our kicking game was outstanding. Lewis Colbert did a great job of punting the football and uh, under a lot of pressure, and and uh, we didn't. Uh, I could, a kicking game stood up in, in, the, in the fourth quarter. Um, I think is when, you know, when after uh, Bo made a long run and we got the field goal, I think it's the first time our players really realized that they could win the football game. Mm -hmm. Up until that point, it had been all Alabama, and, and it was, and, and we really, we, I, you know, I can't decide whether we didn't play well or it was, Alabama was so good. I know that the kids wanted to win, I know they wanted to play hard, but it didn't look like we were playing as well. Okay, we talked the seniors, great leadership yesterday, and those are the people we wanted to talk to in the dressing room after the game. I can't remember any better feeling. This is it. This is it. The class to turn it around. That's it. And it ain't going nowhere but up from here. It's great. Nothing like it. This is the senior class that did it. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. We had great practices. Like I said, I just feel great. It was time, wasn't it? It was time. I put my towel on the left side this time to make sure. And to give a, a program that's been such a class program and a, a bunch of class people and dedicated fans that have followed us, and to give them back something finally after all these years, feeling even have. If you got to graduate and go on, this is the one to do You're it. I'm Yes, sir. Enjoy. How do you feel? My words can't describe it. It's unbelievable. It took five years. Was it worth it? It was worth every minute of it. I mean, it was great. Where were you on the goal line play? I was down in the bottom. Get your block? Yes, sir. Sure <laughs> did. We got it. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Football career's complete now. I can, I can live easy for the rest of my life. We have an down. idea your football career is not complete, though. Well, I hope not, but if it is, it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ain't nothing. Just go. Let's go. God, hey, man, you were a wild man on those last two series when you had to stop him. That's when it, hey, when the tough feel? gets going, the going gets tough. I feel great. I was kind of tired, but I know I had to reach down and look for that second level. What are you going to tell your grandchildren? Oh, I tell you what, I'm going to have this number four jersey right now. I'm never going to ever forget this. I ain't never felt that way in my whole life. <laughs> You waited a long time for this, John. Oh, yeah, I waited nine years for it to happen. <laughs> and it finally came today. Great thrill. I can go home now. I can go to Montgomery. I can go to Birmingham. I can go to Florence. I can go to Mobile. I can go all over the state. I can talk now. It feels great. Glad you followed your brother to Auburn. Yeah, I'm glad I came on down this way. Uh, Walter Lewis caught up with you with that intercepted pass. Yes, sir. He had an angle over, but uh, I still don't know if I could outrun him. He had an angle. He's fast. How does it feel to be the first senior class to turn around? Feels great. We've already talked about it. You know, we talked about it before the game. You know, we want, we want it to be us. Uh, oh, do it for well, Only the seniors. I think you're a no, senior. Do it for fire. No, I'm going to do it to you. How does no, it feel? Now, you, you've been around you all for all your fire. life. You got to tell me how it feels to beat Alabama. I don't have to tell you how it feels. You know. <laughs> It's been a long time. It sure has. Congratulations. Well, don't man. talk to me. Talk okay. to them. We didn't talk to you, David. We're talking only to seniors, Dr. Funderburg. We'll classify you as a senior. How's it feel? Great. We waited for it a long time. And, uh, I think you saw the results out there today, and all the people enjoyed it to the fullest. We uh, don't intend for it to be 10 years again. We're going to meet them head on. And we missed a couple of, uh, let's show those, Coach, and you comment on them. Todd well, Rubley first. Well, Todd is a guy and has been a big part of our program and outstanding student, and fixed to get married in a week or so, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Mike Edwards. He said enough about Mike. He's been one of the uh, best leaders all year long. For the last year, a completely unselfish football player and give his heart for Auburn. Quite a 16 outstanding young men who are the seniors and who are the class that ended the drought against Alabama. We'll return in just a minute. Cloudy, uh, rather warm day, didn't matter. The crowd would have been there anyway. National television, and uh, this is Auburn's second possession. Well, Alabama came out throwing the ball right away, and just, you know, and, and of course that was a nice pass from Randy Campbell to, to uh, Chris Woods, and both running a sweep. We're just trying to find something we can do and have, and this is a very poor, <laughs> Bad mistake on my part going for a first down out there in the middle of the field and score tied nothing, nothing. You come back with a reverse to Joey Jones, and that little guy can run as a great athlete. Yeah, it's proof that a little guy can play. <coughs> he, uh, they, Alabama is, is uh, I, I, I don't think there's any question. After playing them yesterday and looking at them, they're the most talented footballer throughout. Now, I, I, uh, Georgia's got a great team, the has got a great team, but Alabama's got more players. Both sides of football with depth and quality running backs, two quarterbacks that can play. That uh, was a mistake on our part right there. We, we had three or four breakdowns on assignments yesterday that really hurt us bad, and uh, that was one of them. There's a great play right there by Mark Dormany. <coughs> and Tim Drinker takes Tim it Tim Drinker picks it off in, in midair and run to, returns it to the 13-yard uh, line, 14-yard line. Mark Dormany, you can see him in this game. He he just absolutely turned his body loose yesterday, and of course in the late stages of the game, our seniors, I, I, I just they they played like they were possessed. And there's a fine run by Lionel James, great block by Bo Jackson and and uh, Randy Stokes. Randy Stokes made a great decision. His guy was out of the play, and he turned and comes back upfield and gets a piece of uh, pitch there. And, Let's Lionel get in the end zone. Pitts needs to be blocked on every play. Doesn't he? <coughs> he is some kind of player. Well, he is a great football player, and is Alabama doing a good job against us? And I was worried about that. We had a blitz on and thing that we hurt him with last year, and they automatic to the outside veer, and and uh, Moore makes a nice game. They get it down here, and and we come up with a big play right here on fourth and one. Doug Smith, Bob Harris, Chris Martin, just. Come up with a play right in blue, I believe, was on it too. Another outstanding play by Bob Harris. <coughs> I know our fans will be tired of be glad to for me to quit coughing and <laughs> on here's my the, show. Here's the field goal. The Alabama goes ahead ten to seven. Uh, and really dominating the game, it, it seems uh, at this point. You know, coach cashing those two turnovers. <coughs> Uh, that's a great play right there by Gerald Williams, another freshman that, that played real well. You, you can see him right here. He hits Lewis. That's a cause Dennis. Bob Harris comes up with it. And you cash this one, and without those two turnovers. Last year's game, uh, yeah, we actually played better last year than we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. But we didn't take advantage of our opportunities mm -hmm. last year like we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. See some light rain now. Auburn going, <laughs> going in for the touchdown after the turnover. There's a fine play by Randy Campbell throwing to Mike Edwards in the middle on the crossing now. You worked Randy, on the turf all week, didn't you? Well, we'd had to because of the rain. Right. It was a nice run by Lionel to get the ball down to the four-yard line. We uh, got four, four freshmen in the lineup right here. Amazing. In addition to David Jordan and Pat Arrington and Ron O'Neill and that's effort there. Bishop Bishop Reeves, Lionel and Bo, Randy. Randy Stokes started yesterday for the first time all year. Steve Wallace, big freshman from Atlanta. Randy just scratching him back. <laughs> big play for us because it was a third down. We gotta kick a field goal right there if we don't get it in for the touchdown. Doesn't take Alabama long to come back. Well, the passing game, their well, passing game was They brilliant. played Coley and Lewis, and they sent Co uh, Lewis in right before the half in. You can see what a great athlete he, he is scrambling. And sets up a field goal with his pass completion, and just with a couple of seconds on the clock, they kick the Two field seconds. goal. Two seconds. And that gives them a lift. 14-13, then it is at the half. 
We'll be back in just a minute. But, uh, things did not look good at the half. They'd outgained Auburn three to one. Phil, I was I was shocked to be ahead to start with, and 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 when I walked in the dressing room, every coach on the staff had had the people backed up against the lockers. They were chewing <laughs> them out, and and we just we just played terrible. And to be ahead and play that bad, you know, I said, well, you know, maybe something good is going to happen to us before the day is over. And uh, and it did, but you know we 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 still came back out and didn't play very well in the in the uh, in the third quarter. They take it down right down and, and uh, they really dominated. Well, I'm telling you, they you know they they just picked us and they broke containment and we act like we'd never seen the screen before. But we you know they're hustling and you you can watch this Doug Smith trying to get there and they have big more. He's the best fullback we played against all year long. He and Jones. From Florida, both of them are great players. I wouldn't say which one's the best, but they're both good. But right there, we had a missed assignment on that option, and his, we we ran the eye some yesterday, and Bo at fullback, and Randy did a good job of reading and handing off. His line was coming back on the sweep, and I think we pick up the first down there, but we don't make many. <coughs> Probably had to had the ball. Big old nose guard for Alabama. Just Rodriguez. got penetration and gave us two or three bad plays and I'm sure Paul Carruth would like to have that one over again but it we got a good roll out of it and I said we got them backed up we're going to keep them we get back in the ball game and, and lo and behold they take it 95 yards to our one yard line before we stop them here I don't know we just that was a good example of the mix here's a look, look we, we got we got folks trying to get there and just both of that quarterbacks, of course, stayed fresh because they alternated them, and, and Coley as quick as a cat, and Lewis is quick, and he did his Ooh. final job of mixing up the option and the draws and screens and throwing the football as, as you could do. And it kept us off balance all day long, and, and the only thing that good about our defense was yesterday is we didn't quit. There's, there's a fine tackle and play by Ben Thomas and Quincy Williams. That's down close now, and then but, they decide to go for the field goal. But you can see late in the game, in the fourth quarter, that, that uh, our defense, you know, they got stronger and stronger. Of course, we played a lot of people defensively. Here we come on the, on the uh, offense, and Bo breaks out of here with this. Now, this, I think, changed the momentum of the game. I do, too. When Bo broke out of there and we got that long run, then, you know, I think that gave us something to fight for there. And we hand it off to Greg Pratt, and he picks up four yards. We come back. and. Pitts catches Randy from behind. Fourth and three at the five, you decide for the field goal. <coughs> Got to score twice to win anyway. So, I mean, if we score, we have to go to two and make it, and that'll only give us a tie. So we went ahead and kicked the field goal there. This is where the defense rose up. Uh, this is, we stopped them four times in the fourth quarter, and this is, this is uh, one of them here. And as Lewis, fine play right here by Chris Martin. And I, just looking at the film, I think Chris played well yesterday, and as Greg Carr out there with him, both our linebackers. Of course, Chris is a senior. I, I, it was uh, our seniors. Just at this point right here, they, they were really fighting and stretching to get there. There's Ben Thomas, as Dow Altman, getting a hand on the ball. <coughs> Here's the big drive. As Randy throwing to Chris Woods, and, and I don't know how, what kind of spot we got right there. It lost about two yards on it. I know that. And Bo running inside. And well, they're really firing off here we've now. Got to, there's a fourth down play right there over the top. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Ed West had to play good yesterday. Third and down, 14. Coming this up is the on biggest play. play of the game right here, in my opinion. Randy hits Mike Edwards. He goes to Mike in the clutch. We got to have it. He threads a needle. This is a pass interference, and there's no question in my mind about it with being pass interference. The only thing that upset me is that, that that other official didn't call it, and I'm going to talk to the appropriate people and complain about it. Has a big play to bowl on the goal line, takes it down to the one foot line. And over the top, and he got Ooh. in on that last wiggle. Okay. And I thought that uh, I thought that uh, Alabama got pretty good penetration now, and I thought that 
yesterday that he was in a lot. I didn't think it was this close, but it was close. And right there, that last little lunge got him in. And then the place went berserko for well, a time. Right now, you know, we're, we're ahead. And we go for two and don't make it. And now it's play defense and hold on. And we're, we're coming now. Right there is a great play by Dennis Collier. You can see Dennis Collier and Brinkard. And you got all those seniors in the secondary, right? <laughs> <coughs> Look at it. There's Dennis again. And, you know, I'm not sure that the contact caused him to drop it, but, you know, it takes his toll during the ball game. There's Bob Harris the second interception of the day. And if Bob Harris doesn't make first string all conference, and there's not any justice in having an all conference team. Lionel right here on a big run. That's still on the tackle, and he still gets three or four extra yards. The clock doesn't stop. We give it to Lionel again on the draw. A little face mask that it wasn't called. And here's a big play in the ball game that just scared us all to death. Bow over the top. He had the first down made, but the guy put his hat right on the ball. And the last thing I told Randy when we went on the field is tell Bow to squeeze the ball. If we don't make a first down, we're still in good shape. There's good pressure by Gerald Robinson. Ben Thomas right here. <laughs> Comes from behind. I believe I believe they had a missed assignment on the play. I believe that tackle turned the wrong way on pass protection and Ben ran right by him and got the pressure. He's got a hold of him again right there. Quincy's got him. Doug Smith's got him. He dumps it off to, to Turner. He gets out of bounds. Bob Stop. Harris knocks him out of bounds. This is the last one here. Quincy's coming. Got him hemmed up. Ben's there. Down the middle. And it's all over now. And the ball goes over, and Auburn runs out. To the <coughs> and then it's Legion th Field turned into some two things about the, things about the game, uh, Phil. You know, and, and and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't send our players back on the field yesterday, and I didn't go back out there myself to to put on a big show or anything like that. But I wanted our players to get the true feeling and the emotions of winning a big football game. Mm. That's the first big, big game that we've won. That's national good. television, Alabama. And it's going to come down to having to win one like that to win a national championship one of these days. And I wanted to go back out to our people because I knew that how happy they would be and the, the weeping and wailing with joy and, and our student body and, and all of our fans that have been so good to us ever since I've been at Auburn. Even last year when we wasn't winning, look at them passing Lionel around here. I wanted them to, to feel what it's like, you know, to win one of those big ones. Because, like I said, the, it'll, it'll come back again, and it might make us play a little harder. And, and um, it's uh, something that, that, uh, that, you know, I'm just so happy for our, our fans and, and our student body. And, you know, they could get up this morning and, and look forward to reading the paper, and it's been a long time. You're right. On Sunday morning after the Alabama game. You're right. We'll be back in just a minute. <clears throat> Phil, I'd like to thank our coaches uh, on the offensive side of the football, Bud Casey, uh, Jack Crow, Neil Calloway, James Daniel, Larry Blakeney, Wayne Bolt, all did a terrific job all year long. Defensively, Frank Orgel, Wayne Hall, Bobby Wallace, Joe Whit, I just uh, did a great job. Alan Bolinger working with our punters and kickers. I uh, also like to thank our uh, sponsors for the show this year. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. But Colonial, Colonial Company and Better Homes and Gardens, Pepsi, Carousel, Long's Electronics, and Russell Corporation. It's been a good year, and I hope we've got a lot of good ones in our future. We'll see you next year. Thank you, Coach.